Finn at Gavin. Tireless <laughs> Lomer. <laughs> Newly uh, integrated to the Twitter sphere. Philip Garo, aka Tyler Slomer. You can go follow him. He has about five followers. Uh, you no could... profile. <laughs> a little bit of profile, right? Yeah, I, I, had, I had some. Like, it's He's... very, it's very white for the for You're the. You're still like an, yeah. an avatar. Exactly. Thing. I, I'm a silhouette. <laughs> I have a white back. I will change that in the future. I guarantee you, there will be some personal magic stuff uh, on the back added. That will be very relatable to uh, some players, including him, of course. So um, this is our first ever edition of our talk show that we've been having for the past about year. Used to be uh, the Arena Super Show or just Arena Super Show. It was in French, so you might have like seen it, uh, you know, in our posts, and it was like in French, and you were like, "What the fuck is this?" like why do i follow this page why is this in french um you know you were not wrong it was kind of out of place at this point that it was in french because all of that we do all of our tournaments are in english so uh here we are so people don't know you philip Who they, are you? people out of quebec city do not know me uh because i don't do a lot of social networking outside of Maybe my, my own Facebook page. I'm very dinosaur-ish in terms of uh, new, new social media such as Twitter. That's why he was joking about the fact that I just made a Twitter account for this specifically. So I could be tagged now in this great show that is going to be a future thing on our, on our roster. Uh, you will get to hear me talk a lot about magic and maybe other things. Uh, great formats such as Cube, Set Roulette, and... Uh, I don't know, limited, maybe? Pre-modern. Pre pre-modern. We'll talk yes, about pre-modern. Pre the the good old frames. <laughs> the best frame. So um, Round Artifacts. Phil uh, is gonna be with me. We're gonna be our he's gonna be my co-host for the foreseeable future. And um, Felix is still there, don't worry. He's, I'm still here. He's here in forms of clicks and voice. Yes, I am very, very far <laughs> from the microphone, so. Hopefully you don't hear the clicks. We might have fixed that today, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, don't worry, Felix will be there. He will be taking care of reading the chat and uh, throwing us questions that, you know, in downtimes or whatever is interesting that we can talk about. Um, Today, we are doing something very similar to what we were doing with the Arena Super Show. We didn't change that structure much. Um, we like more streamed, streamlined it. So, and now that we actually have someone producing, it's gonna be 100% better than it was. Um, so with that said, we like to talk about news, anything that's uh, of relevance in Magic, whether it's, uh, you know, related. We don't go as far as like, people getting banned no. but um but we talk about cards being banned we, we will or, talk or, about cards unbanned. being banned or but the, what i just did is like the line of where we don't go to um so we'll talk about bad esports organization decisions and stuff like that sure uh we like going there um we also will talk about metagames and which is probably what you want to be listening to uh phil Hasn't been playing that much Magic recently. And I haven't. Neither have I. <laughs> I I've, I've played Standard like recently after the Companion fiasco, if you will. Uh, I did not do a lot of... After? After, okay. yeah. Uh, while Companions were at their stratosphere of power levels, I did not do a lot of online play due to confinement. Uh, magic is something that appeals to me a lot. And looking at the new cards really makes me want to play magic however since during confinement we did not get to do that because i'm much more of a paper player than i am an online player i actually just removed myself kind of from magic since i get to work with that every day uh since i wasn't doing that being in magic didn't feel right to me uh, uh about a week before i went back to work i decided to like put in a draft or two of icoria and things of that nature uh the the limited format hadn't been uh, affected by the new command the companion rule uh at that point and i got to draft two sweet decks i was able to actually draft the urian deck full on 60 cards in limited and 
easily, was before they changed it. That, that was before they changed it. I just easily 7 0 the my my league, if you will, and just destroyed everyone because just having an eighth card and being a four or five flyer in limit is pretty dumb. Uh, I also got to do with the uh, the five five, the red green five five, uh, G- Giganta, was it? Okay, another draft. In in, okay. in, a, in a second in a second draft, uh, in action, which was my first draft of of the two. Yeah, that one is busted. As in, like, it's not as good as the other ones, but it's so easy to build with. It. Exactly. I was like, I I might have mispicked a card because I forgot about the rule at the beginning, but uh, that that was fine. After they changed the rule, it wasn't as appealing to me, so I just stopped drafting it and. I just waited till course at 2020, which the the five five red green one. Like every time I drafted Icaria a shit ton, and every time I had it, I literally kept forgetting that I couldn't pick like double colors. I was never looking for it, and literally, it's never happened that I picked a card that I couldn't play. It happened to me <laughs> once, and it was like I don't know. It was like this uncommon that was this cost seven. I think you could cycle it to get first strike counter. Oh, uh, like right, right, that right. thing. The, the six, four, four, six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't put it in Which my deck, so I don't remember what it did. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's really replaceable. And uh, now that Corsa twenty twenty one is out, I can easily state that it is probably Magic's best corset to date. Really? Uh, yes. We're gonna have a an opposite uh, <laughs> argument on this. <laughs> Maybe not limited wise. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, your statement is I actually kind of agree with your statement. It's gonna be it's gonna be based on the power level of the set, uh, in the cards that people actually want to put their put them in their decks, their commander decks, or whatever format you will. Okay, you're just saying like it's a good uh, power level design booster packs for this are great like, yes it's good exactly it's a good set i didn't say it was great and limited i didn't say it was bad and limited i didn't get that many drafts in um i haven't had a horrible experience yet but in terms of you look at cards if you compare it straight up to icoria yeah. you look at icoria cards and you look at m like m21 cards icoria you don't think you're playing magic you think you're playing, I don't know, it's, you know game. anything else. They created a board game for Magic for like three months. That's what yeah, <laughs> you, you think you're playing Ixalan, but it's an outer space or whatnot. <laughs> and you sit, look at Corset 2021, and you're like, wow, these texts sound like Magic cards. <laughs> they're like, they have relevant things that they're doing. They're drawing cards. They're killing creatures. You're putting lands into play, yeah, it, and you're attacking. Okay, so you, we are actually kind of saying the same thing in the end. Because okay. I talked with that uh, with Felix. I think that one of the last uh, show that we had before we took a little break to build this, we um, I think Corset Twenty One was like just just started to no, it was like fully spoiled, but I don't think it was out or played with yet. It maybe wasn't out on an Arena, but we were. I remember that we we were looking at spoilers and we said this looks like the set that has uh, that's like completely different from what they've been doing for the past like five years. Especially the last year. The last year. Yeah. Please, let's forget the last year. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, complete, like, 180. And... This is a good thing? Uh, yeah, in a, in, in a sense, but it's so different that it has almost no effect on standard because all the cards are so... Su- like, they're such low power level. That, I like, mean, I've been Ugin a whole bunch of times, but it's not Ugin's fault, it's Nissa's fault. I mean, one of the jokes in the format is that, like... The best deck is just Teamer Reclamation that plays no cards from M twenty one. Sure, because and they're... or you could you could argue it'd be like Bank Control that just ramps into Ugin, which is the only other card that they yeah, added. Yeah, I mean, sure, Ugin is fine, but it's not a new card. It's like we all know sure. the card is okay. really good, right? We know the card is really good. We've played with it before. You now didn't it's just succeed creating. Your it's set just now cheaper to put in your commander deck. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Matter of fact, it is much cheaper. Now. It is about half as less. Yeah. Half as much less. Yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty glad I bought mine pretty much like two months before they announced the announced. Yeah, with your sleeves. Yeah. What was that called again? Let's do a shout out to it again. Oh, man. It's like these little... Have you seen this? It's like a... It's a perfect fit sleeve. It's Altered card. Sleeve. Uh, no, okay, Altered Sleeve is the, the name of yeah, the it's product. Yeah, the brand that makes it. Um, and the brand. You can go check it out. So Altered Sleeve. Alter Sleeves. Alter... AlterSleeves.com. Yeah. Yeah, actually, or I'm, I'm Google that. I'm just gonna show it to everyone. Cool, our producer yeah, can do that. Stick it in the chat. <laughs> so, so wait, if I do this, this is perfect sleeve has an altar on, like printed on it, like super good quality. 
That's, so what you do, you just slide it. So they, you can buy one for your Yugen. One sleeve that you buy, you put it on your Yugen, and it looks like it has a sick outer. Okay, yeah, the website is really good at like oh, showing what it is. Doesn't want to show it to you guys. I'm gonna get it done. <laughs> so you buy you you pay for one sleeve. You're paying for one sleeve. Yeah, it. I think it might not. It might never get popular because the. Yeah, honestly, like, it's because it's, paying for one sleeve you're is paying for one sleeve. But let's, like, but, but the way the, think the, the reason why I purchased it, like myself, is I had some damaged cards. Okay. That didn't look good, right? So that's why they're damaged. Yeah, and I bought those for cheap, and then it, it wasn't that big of an I mean, investment to pay maybe like like seven to eight dollars for a sleeve that would make it look. Which times. would probably make your Ugin cost at least fifty dollars left, depending on <laughs> the damage that was on the on the card. Absolutely, yeah. At like, the time, think about it. How much would you pay for a sick altar like this? Like, are they seeing it? By the way, this chat. Has chat ever seen it? I think they did because mo most of our chat is people that would watch the arena super short. No, no, but I'm saying like, are they looking at the the website right now? Oh, like, I don't did think you they are. did you I, screen I didn't capture link it? it to them. So let me come back here. Anyway, you can go check that out, Alter Sleeve. And what I was saying is, think about it. Like, how much would you pay for an Alter? You would pay at least five dollars if you were going to a GP and an artist like. They or would just, sign you give or, them five dollars. Or if you just actually sent them their card your cards and you had, I don't know, things drawn on them. And I think they they charge you like a lot to do that. Like yeah, at least a hundred. Probably more than you get from a sleeve. It kinda of yeah. depends, right? So you can have it done for like twenty five to all the way to like two fifty US. Okay. Because it could yeah. be from one from someone that's not the artist, obviously. Also, yeah. Absolutely. So think about it that way. You're paying six dollars and you're not ruining your card. Like you can You can unalter it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're, I guess they're tournament legal because it sleeps, right? Yeah, true. It doesn't have much of a texture. Because they're perfect fits. Yeah, yeah. they're okay. perfect fits. Yeah, so you can just split them in your sleeve and there you go. Would that require you to like have your whole deck be like that? I don't think it would. No, I don't think it, I don't think it makes it thicker. It, they just print it in the, the perfect fit, right? There's no texture to the sleeve, right? The, not really, no. Mm. Okay. There's like, there's, I guess, no, there's no like quote-unquote texture to it but it's more like there's a fine print on it so it's printed on the sleeve and not under like inside of it okay. so you, there can be a little bit of a texture on it but it's not really so they got all that legal text on the fine print yeah <laughs> i have a question for chat i have a question for chat when felix was talking like 20 seconds ago could you hear him i'm interested because he could yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's quite far from the microphone. Fine. Yeah, but it it's quite good. It's like the, the studio is well. Okay, nice. That's the genre. People tend to be great. saying yes. Yes, we can. And it's yes, like good, can. I guess. All right, cool. That's great. We have the perfect setup then. So, with that said, these sleeves are not that bad. Uh, they, they, I think that would be a lot more popular if the first thing that you think about is like six dollar for a sleeve. But then when you think about it, it's so much better than it. Yeah. And it's you're paying also all the arts. They come from artists that list on their on these web, like. So it's like a two-part system, an art. right? Where they make the sleeves, but the artwork are from artists, and artists, artists so. upload it and gets a cut. They so you can only buy art from artists that are signed by Magic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, not but that no, no, signed no. up to that service, right? Since it's all you, you could do it. You could be like, I'm an artist. I'm gonna upload these things. Okay. And then some people might buy it or not, but most of the time, if you do a yeah. good job, they'll buy it. Okay. Yeah. You have a bit of flag. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, fair warning to English chat. Uh, we turned this show to English, but we will have some French still words. Quebec, baby. Yeah, still, yeah, Quebec. To Quebec, c'est All right, so. <laughs> Uh, this is gonna happen. You're gonna have to live with it. Um, He's gonna do it more than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Like Phil. Okay, first of all, you were. I lived in the states for eight years, so I don't have this problem. In general, I tend to use English words more in my French vocabulary than vice versa, unless the word doesn't exist, because maybe it only exists in French slang. But 
I'll find an alternative. Like, I mean, I'll find an alternative. <laughs> du fan service, Félix. <laughs> oh, Rick, my man. Oh, it's so funny because Rick has been watching us for like the past five like, arenas for show. Yeah. In cool. French. And he's like, I don't understand anything, but I enjoy this. And he's just been there and giving us bits. By the way, thank you for the bits, Rick. Really appreciate it. And great that you can now literally understand what we're saying. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, what were we talking about? You were talking about sleeves and they were printing Before them. sleeves. We got to sleeves because of something. What was it? Um, we were talking about Corset 2021. Yes. Uh, and we were talking about Ugin. Ugin. And then he damaged. He named his Ugin. Okay, so that's... You yeah, said, you said Team of Reclamation was the best deck because it had no M21 cards. Yeah, okay. Correct. That's where we were. So... Yeah, so the set is super low powered compared to like the past like 12 months of sets to the point where like it's a good step forward as in i think they needed to lower the power level it's like yes. getting too ridiculous yes and it's fine and great that they put out a new set that's like like magic 10 years ago but it's gonna five take a ago. while it wasn't 10 ah, years ago it's like, mean, like five years ago Look at the Planeswalkers. I mean, none sure. of them is close they, to play they re, like They redid accumulated knowledge, and it's only you instead of them. I mean, accumulated knowledge is not that good. It's not even play. Like, it's not good anymore. I understand. So, like, this set is... I mean, card advantage doesn't matter in general right now, because, like, if it doesn't cost, like, five minutes of Planeswalkers... four other things. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's not good. Plus, minus, ultimate life but okay. guys in play what's the um like look at the planeswalkers when's which, the last which, time we which had planeswalker? planeswalker all of them they're all unplayable in you mean in m21 yeah yeah besides teferi uh yeah besides teferi teferi is very playable yeah, yeah. teferi sure 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 the other ones like, like the chandra that's this five mana shock yeah yeah like, five mana shock is compared these planeswalkers to What's the last time we had a core set that had planeswalkers that were worse than this? Except the fairy, of course. Ooh. That were worse than this? Yeah. You are like core set M15? Like what, compare what compare they? the Chandra from this core set to Pyromaster for M14. Pyromaster's a lot better, like not close. I agree. Yeah, okay. But we probably took the worst planeswalker. Like, okay. We're not gonna take the we're not gonna take the Lauren Garrick and compare it to the new Garrick because Lauren Garrick untaps lands and ultimates the turn after. Yeah, Lauren, Lauren Garrick is better than that new one. Yes, I and agree. And like that was the first place Walker, and that was like a power level of. Okay, how about six mana Garrick? What's six mana Garrick? Six mana call Garrick. Of the beasts. Is that the one? It is the Call of the Beasts. Four card list double cards. The draws creatures. Yeah, plus one. You look at the top. I think either three or five cards. You I take mean, a that card was played, but it was played in very very specific decks. It was like a. So it's not a good magic card. I mean, it did not like. Did it was it, played in some decks. I seem to have some memory of it being the two one and two. It, they, it in decks full of like only creatures, yeah, it was good. I remember. Randy, Jundish type decks. Not Jund. No, no, Jund no, would no, not. No, no, that. it was like a deck you, that was you, like you, it has to be like creatures. mana ramp. Like okay. it had to be a green devotion deck. I'm gonna find it because because okay. <laughs> you have to have like okay, thirty no, chat, dudes chat, in your deck. That's your job. Chat, you you gotta find a deck list with like a tier one deck, tier one or tier two deck list that plays Garrick, Color of the Beasts. Is that the Color word? Color Beasts. I think Color it's beast. Beasts. Six mana Garrick. There's only one green six mana Garrick. There's a black green one. Yeah, the other one's but green. The this, five this mana one, one is insane. Primal Hunter. Like yeah. that one is like that one. That, that, one, was, like that, was, a, that, that was fine. That's the one that was right now. It would be just was, okay. Yes, but because it actually drew cards. It, it was a plus one. Put a guy in a play. Yeah. Minus three. Draw four. Mm. Yeah, or draw five if you have a track list in play or something. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a really good. Yeah, and that card was played at the same time. You didn't really need list. to do that when you had no, track list in play. But... You need to like have white mana and these angels that like get to do it again. But you still had the the jump version was more towards like sacrificing them with the cycle of bulls. No, that did not happen. Yeah, I played. Jun played cards like Olivia Voldaren. Yeah. And they just like stole your cards. But I, I drew some cards off of a Disciple of Bolas. On what you do and what people yeah, do okay, at no, winning no. tournaments no, 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 is no. different. It, there, it was a one of. I, I couldn't care. <laughs> okay. It was a one of. I, But yeah. Yeah. You both win. Are, are, you are, both are, win. <laughs> like, because you're guilty of playing this one of? No, no, but like, Felix was right. 
but he was kind of like seeing in a way like I was playing four and it was playing that, <laughs> that card. Was no, it was like a one of my casual lens that Reed Duke once made a child fireball video where it was playing one and then Felix used but, that deck. But Reed Duke played <laughs> every single Jund card in Jund. True. <laughs> That's why you're also right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you told me like Sam Black made a deck with Bola, with Thrag Tusk and, and Disciple Boss, I'd 100% agree with you because he probably did. <laughs> and he's just like, this is awesome. I'm going to play a Thrag Tusk. I'm going to sack it. I'm going to draw five cards. It's going to be insane. And then he did it. it and then he probably won that game. And then he probably won another deck. Because he had more cards to try. <laughs> So chat saying Liliana is playable if there's enough graveyard synergy and no more Teferi. At three Teferi. To be fair, Liliana at three mana, four mana that essentially have the same plus one and all that have only plus one loyalty makes it significantly worse at plus one mana. It's, yeah, what I'm saying, I think that card is very unplayable because it's, the, 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 it's, it's Liliana the Veil that's worse. That cost an additional mana. It, up. For, for one additional mana, you get an additional loyalty. Yeah. However, your minus two is not a minus three, so this plus this and, additional loyalty and is it's irrelevant. Traditional. It's a it's situation because you have to have cards in your graveyard, and giving a minus X minus X doesn't always kill the creature that you're looking to kill, and sacrificing creature may also not do that I mean, as on well. Turn three, most but of on the time turn three, you're just killing your opponent's two drive, and it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Yeah. It's generally a turmer boy for whatever two drop you'd like in turn mm. play. Maybe a thing in the ice. All right, so we're on the same page. Liliana sucks. Sorry, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so my point being the planeswalkers suck in, in this new set, and it's like I think that's besides a good. Besides the fairy, yeah, besides the fairy, and it's a good. Uh, for me, it's like I take the planeswalkers in that set, and I'm like, I compare. And there's five, so you can compare it to another set and be like, okay, that's because the planeswalkers are that much worse. This set is probably worse in general. That's not the only thing that you look at for sure. And even if War of the Spark didn't exist, we'd probably still be playing. We'd probably still be saying this. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good way to say it. I like, mean, there are other planeswalkers that are sufficiently powerful in other sets of matches that are currently standard legal that do not specifically come from War of the Spark and that are not called like Teferi for three mana or Nissa for five mana. Like, like Vivian's a great planeswalker. The, the creature one. The 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 one from Ikoria that just like is essentially a vizier of the many. Uh, uh, yeah, Vizier this from, card, from Omnicat, that... which is cool. But then you look at you put it next to Lucas, uh, or Luca, whatever it's his name, <laughs> which is which only has one ability and it's polymorph. Like they added they added a whole bunch of text to the card, and then like they covered the top with an ability, they covered the bottom with ability, but the only relevant ones in the one in the middle, and it's double polymorph. <laughs> Huey Jensen's second place list from 2013 SCG Open Somerset is the only list I can find. But oh, it was it was played in the Devotion list. deck. It was legal at the same time as the Devotion. I deck. mean, I would play it in Devotion deck because all you do is have man and have yeah, dudes. Yeah. But that's yeah, that, but that's I don't know if that's the list that he's talking about. Green I don't know. Elves. Green, white elves. But it was played in the devotion deck. That's I remember 100%. Because I mean, our red, green, the, the red, green devotion decks were actually good. We just like topped out of Tarka. And the only planeswalker we put in there was Xenagus. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it's like it wouldn't see play otherwise. I think the, the new Vivian is actually very. That's what I think. When I think of that card, I think of Garrick. It's like good in the same type of decks, but it's better and less. The only like, problem is, I feel like it starts at like such a low loyalty for the yeah. for the investment you're getting in. Yeah. Like it's finally a planeswalker that your opponent is going to actively want to kill because it's great. Like it makes three threes with key with with lines of text on them, but it's so easy to kill compared to the other ones that you don't actually want to kill, but you have to because they're just going to kill you. Yeah, because they turn things into agents of treachery, which don't happen anymore. Thank you, uh, just another elk. Can I just call you three three? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, course at M twenty one is bad, and I was saying that like the limited format after getting Ikoria, like Dominaria, and like uh, Guilds of Ravnica. Uh, I think Ravnica is just like pretty good. Uh, anyway, how like, did you think about Throne? Uh, Throne was great. Thro I think Throne was awesome. Theros. Uh, which one? Theros. I, I didn't play that. Okay. I only literally only drafted that set at the Pro Tour. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and Black, done, Green, uh, <laughs> Black Green Escape was great. Okay. I mean, I played a. That's not true. I played a sealed a, G, a sealed GP with you, like after like a month after. Yes, the the, the the one I didn't date to after seven years. Well, Did I date to? 
No, because I would have drafted that set more then. So yeah, I, I did too. My first day two was the the original Theros, and then the first time I didn't day two again was going to be the second Theros. I was, told you there was going to be conspiracies and Illuminati shit here. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Where's the tin foil at? <laughs> I played tin foil at comes from Darius for Super Show, but it's not gone. <laughs> played against a, a very large amount of uh, of Dream Trawlers. Oh yeah. So I played against like your like. What was that Sphinx's name? Like the um, the five drop from original Prognostic Sphinx. Sphinx. Yeah, it's very Prognostic similar like, to Dream Trawlers, but like a, mid, good, a million but times Dream better. Trawlers, like, oh. Prognostic Sphinx did not have lifelink. It didn't. But it, it was, it was for, still insane. Right? But it was it only still for three. It didn't attack for five. No. But it was still unbeatable in Terrace Limited, in the original one. That was so it was the best rare you could open. I mean, it was it was it was still great. It cost one less men. It wasn't two colors, but I mean. You play against him more because it was a rare. Well, this one is also rare, but it's two colors. But you know when you're pulling those islands planes, you're like, this guy's probably got a dream trawler. Hopefully, I kill him before then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are all three threes. <laughs> yeah, because it's not a good a Jimmy Aren't we all three threes? Aren't we all three threes? <laughs> <laughs> Philosophical talk. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I'm gonna use that so much now. <laughs> okay, great. But aren't we just all three threes? Yeah. <laughs> so, I basically that's one. Okay, that's the one upside with having sets that are super power high power level is that you get great limited sets. None of the cards is unplayable, and like it's it creates just super deep limited formats that are fun and stuff. And in constructor, you get to whine a lot. They're like literally block constructed formats. Like the power level, okay. The power is not quite there, but it's like I mean, they're in only direction. one set. So you're saying like a single set now, yeah, like a single set a there. As a uh, no, because it's different. Think, it's think about be Mono Red and how many cards from Mono Red exist only in th in uh, in Throne. Like you have Bone Crusher Giant, you have Ember Cleave, you have. Uh, I mean, they're all champion. rares. So I'm saying, like, your like, limited decks not gonna have all these rares. No, all no, the time, but right? I mean, like, you, you're saying it's a block constructed. I mean, Mono Red is essentially constructed of that set. Yeah, yeah. But the, the I mean, the decks are as functional and like deep, and that's what I mean. Because but, they have mechanics. Yeah, they have the mechanics that intertwine and all that stuff. And something uh, we couldn't actually, they couldn't actually get to do properly back when we were actually just drafting two or three sets. In yeah, that was much harder for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's yeah, it's much easier for them to do that with when it's always the same. Like set. imagine, I don't know, take take Scars of Mirrodin when we started doing the the reverse yeah. drafting. But that show was with great though. That was such a great block to draft. Wait, hold on. Because you're a fan of poison. Can you, can you say that again? Yeah. At New Ferric, at, at Mirrodin Besiege in New Ferric, is the first time we had to start drafting backwards. Oh, ba like really? back when you're a dinosaur. As like myself, uh, in is original, that Ixalan? in it wasn't Ixalan. <laughs> yeah, Ixalan is a dinosaur. I'll I'll take Mirrodin for instance. Original Mirrodin, you would uh, in triple Mirrodin, you draft triple Mirrodin. When Darksteel came out, it'd be double Mirrodin, uh, Darksteel. And then when Fifth On came out, it was Mirrodin, Darksteel, Fifth On. However, the the two sets afterwards weren't as impactful in your draft because you already knew how to draft Mirrodin. However, you'd have to like oh. draft different cards in your first pack to accompany to like accompany the second and the third set, depending on what you'd open. By turning it around at uh, I believe it was either New Frix or Mirror and Besieged, that you get to now experience the new cards and that you already know the, how the old cards function, that you have to understand how to build your deck with the new cards and then trickle down. Yeah. Removing that whole aspect from a design perspective lets them crunch all those mechanics into one set. And if you hate those mechanics, well, you just hate this one set instead of hating the whole year of magic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that. I mean, that, that chain was just obviously very good, I think, for, for a limited. Like, it just. It, it just sells makes more sense. booster packs. It does. It does sell more booster packs. Really and so they, they made this set that's super low power level and like now you're back to an old car set drafting experience where it's like 25 percent of the, of the cards that are going to be in your pool are just unplayable and probably more than 25 because yeah more than 25 but like okay 25 percent of your deck is like fillers and cards you don't want in your deck that has nothing they're to do with your deck guys because otherwise you run out of playable so your decks are so in, you're unbelievably inconsistent 
that's one thing with the high power level cards they're all cards that make that removes variance from magic so like your decks do what they need to do and they do it more powerfully and in a more fun way more versatile way efficiently on that so of course it's just like well i hope i'll draw the half of my deck that's decent and works together sometimes you draw your good card but you draw your shit card they're not synergistic and like you lose half the games because your deck doesn't function basically this shouldn't actually need to exist because you can you can make commons on commons be generally powerful and efficient in in their own living environment without having your mythic rares be uro and things of this nature yeah i mean um synergy is a big aspect of that because you know one plus one is more than one that's <laughs> two so like the the cards gang up together whereas course it's always like you may you can't just have a common that's way too good like that's not some synergize because otherwise you're just your set is full of lightning bolts and ancestral recalls and like there are cards that have upgraded in this set though Swift Response is a much better version sure. than what we had like in M19, I believe. But, but it's was... an answer, though. It like, is an answer. Like, you want cards that are proactive that are synergistic and are powerful because that's what that's what's fun. Like, if you have... You, we've all seen decks where it's like, okay, I have seven really good removal, but all my threats sucks. The gameplay is not fun. <laughs> I mean, your opponent probably just has, doesn't have fun because they don't have guys in play and you, they're just getting hit in the face with two... Yeah, but it's four. not fun. Like, you never have to think. You just like... Point this click die. This is dead. This is dead. All right. Uh, I only have to play like three or four. Play conditions. my planeswalker. Yeah, like unlimited. It's it's awful gameplay. But I mean, it's awful gameplay. It's old magic gameplay, which not entirely awful. It really depends on your perspective. But it's one sided gameplay. It's like simple. Yeah, kind of. It's like super simple. It's like the, most of the experience comes from the draft. And after you like play my cards, I don't. Know, it feels like in, in right, throne or whatever. So I, I think I understand what you're saying. Is that your decision making process doesn't feel as relevant as it does yeah. while drafting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I, the the only way I could explain this was actually with a French comparison, which is the combo de garage, which com, which That's, is oh my god, <laughs> which translates I to love this so much janky combos in, yeah. in English, which is. Doesn't have the same vibe to it, but probably does not. <laughs> in French, it, from the shot, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it doesn't have the same feel to it. It really does not. It yeah. it, it doesn't, but um, Combo Garage. Yeah. That's the, yeah. All of that to say that basically it's gonna take a few more sets before. Well, if if they're if all the other sets the will have this this power level and that. I guess it'll be fine, except unfortunately, Throne is still going to be in standard for until next year, and those sets from those cards from those sets are just probably going to outweigh the new ones, which yeah isn't very good. If for... they do that for like two more sets, it's going to take like three sets before it actually has an impact. It's going to take a second rotation. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it might actually literally take a rotation. But what I'm saying is like if they have like three sets where they have five playable cards in each set, then in the end you might have a deck that's mostly made of these new cards. Yeah. But mostly it's gonna happen when we have like an a rotation, basically. So but one thing that okay, we're just gonna talk about this because it's fascinating, but uh, I saw someone suggest that they Okay, let's let, let's first talk about do you think I think that paper standard is is never gonna exist again? It's dead. Yeah, it's. I dead. mean, in in Quebec City in general, standard was already an issue. It, but it's it not just in Quebec. Support. It's really not I just in Quebec. I mean, like, uh, I'll I'll speak for what I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. It was really hard to launch events. People were not interested in buying cards for a rotating format. Commander was all the rage. Like the reason people like Commander so much is they get to buy things do it as much as they want for as long as they want without caring about a rotation yeah but for wizards this doesn't create money or traffic but like for stores that sell singles it's the only thing that's keeping us alive is people buy commander decks every day for hundreds of dollars and this is not even an exaggeration i have been doing i've been selling cards to people for 15 years at a, at a card store and in the past i'll say 
eight years because Commander started was, was branded by Wizards in 2011, and it didn't really come up as almost ten years. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost been ten years, but like in 2013 when they did the second wave of Commander is really when like it stuck and it like it hooked and like I used to back then like build casual decks for players that were just like playing kitchen table matching yeah, and, and what and four of and and, and whatnot yeah. nowadays if someone comes into my store and isn't talking to me about commander i will actually be surprised if it is a non-competitive format and they are playing a 60 card deck with more than one copy of a given card in their deck and it is not a competitive format i am shocked yeah Honestly, as a very, very casual player, um, most of the people I end up playing with get into Commander. I don't. I, I think Commander is great for the game, and I think it is the most organic way that Magic is played since it doesn't have a meta game. Like you just bring your deck yeah. of cards you want to play, and that you get to play with, and your Commander you get every it's game. It's an like, everlasting board game. It, it, yeah, exactly. And you get to play with your Commander every game because it's essentially in your hand because it's in the command zone. And you get to do this for as long as you want because Commander doesn't rotate. Commander doesn't get cards banned either. Like it gets card like banned once in a lifetime. Sure, our, our favorite Otter Companion it, it, it got banned, but didn't. It wasn't most people relevant. don't care. Like, like it we just don't affect care. People exactly. And some people will continue playing that card, and it doesn't matter. But when people come into the store with deck lists or concepts of building a Commander, it's like. I had I just opened this new black white rare and I wanted it as my commander. I'd like to build a deck around this. I have to just take cards out and be like, "This would be good in your deck. This is interesting." And I feel like it's a great exercise. It's for a, someone that loves magic. Exactly, and it's essentially what magic should be because it's what you want to be doing. It's not what you have to be doing. As a competitive Magic player, you have to be doing certain things because you have to stop other people from doing what they believe is the most powerful thing. And you have the group of people that say, play the best deck. And you have the group of people that's like, well, if you're playing the best deck and I was listening to you, I want to beat you. So I have to create a deck that beats you. So I'm not playing what I want. I'm playing something that beats you. Which doesn't really make Magic... I wouldn't say fun. It's it's fun in a different way, but it's not fun in a magic way. It's fun in more of like an intellectual, I have a bigger penis than you way. <laughs> Are we still talking about Commander? <laughs> no. <laughs> By the way, uh, thank it you. can be about that sometimes. I'll just put it on. No, no, no. Comma when, when, when Commander goes there, it's because you got foils. It's because you got expensive cards. Yeah. And it's because your opponents are not having fun. There is a yeah. there's a finite amount of fun you can have in a commander game, and the objective of that player is to have as most of it as possible. Therefore, if you don't have fun, I have all. The fun. All right, I think I need to go plunder life now that I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking mind blown right now, bro. Thank you, uh, Matsuri, for the seven months. By the way, Matsuri and Gael, they they know each other. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot. And welcome back. Discount Goats with the four months. Thank you, Discount Goats. Press X to doubt. Okay. That's the thing. Is that F for respects and X for doubts? I think so. Okay. What, what, what are we doubting about? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, he's doubt, maybe he's doubting about his life decisions that were funneled into Commander games of where he was not trying to have the most fun possible. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have set roulette commander? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Yes, we're we're not there yet. Felix says yes. <laughs> My deck is sleeved. sleeved? <laughs> here, great. here are the six sets I have chosen to, for my commander deck. <laughs> so, 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 commander set roulette is: does everyone get to choose from the same set, or you choose your own six sets, and you're like, I'm going to build a command with these six sets for another episode. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a question for sealed set roulette. <laughs> sealed set. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, That's called chaos trip <laughs> and rebranded mystery booster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what were we at? Where 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 were we at? Where, where you were bashing we on M twenty one how the cards suck except yeah, for Teferi. After that, I was. I think I was done. We closed on that. 
Uh, you said it would have to take a while for Magic to print sets for me to play cards and you to play cards of that set because they suck so much. Yeah. Uh, we but, talked about standard. I We did. I, I, we, I, talk, we talked about it really dying in a paper version. I, I need to type what I'm talking about because we like derail so much that I just forget. So standard. I'm going to type standard is dead. And now... Standard so, is dead in paper. Yeah. So Phil talked about like he works in stores and in Quebec it doesn't work. It's never worked. The only the only times that people play standard w was when Wizards where... forced us to do it yeah. because they gave us a competitive reason to do so. Then we would just repetitively break the format and it would always suck. Yeah, I mean you yeah in the you're you're saying like in general like that's what it's been that happens. for like at least for the past four years. Yeah. So that's just what happens. Like and ever, I'd, I'd say ever since Battle for Zendikar. But honestly, it hasn't really happened that much with the past year of sets because the sets are so good that look. I mean, it's like clusters of cards that are too good. Now it's like Euro Girls Spiral. Yeah, sets like you have, you have that, three but... clusters. You have putting cats in ovens. You yeah. have Titans out of your graveyard, and you have what's is there a third deck? You burning people? It's like I haven't been played. Like people haven't uh, been attacking. I mean, there's the blue green deck. There's the teamer and bant. And okay, the teamer's decks. the combo deck. Then you have the growth spiral mana. They're not even combo. They're literally. I thought about that the other day, and like these decks, they do not have. They're so different from usual Magic. Mid range control combo aggro doesn't define them. Not at all. All the cards of, of, of Tamer Reclamation in general, or just the just decks, all the standard. decks in center right now. They're all combo decks. Aggro decks doesn't exist. <laughs> They're all mid range anymore. combo decks. Yeah, and the combo <laughs> is having growth spiral and playing three land, three lands. Like yeah. it's, it's drawing. It's having growth spiral into reclamation into make all this mana and kill you. It's just all the the decks have no problems. The decks they all have cards that do a million different things. Yes. it's impossible to attack these decks. Like. It's just because depending flawed. on the line of text of the card at a given time, it'll do something different. Yeah. See Sharknado. <laughs> yeah. Like it, these cards are. Oh, just... Is there actual cards on, like actual text on Sharknado? that's not like make. Yeah, it's that shark and draw a card. It's that. Yeah, it's that. You and can it... make a shark at instant speed, or you can make sharks next turn. Yeah, but that almost never happens. It like... happens when you're too far ahead. Yeah, and it doesn't matter because you could have oh, just no, made I'm a big shot. You'd know right. that as being a commander player. You'd cast that six man enchantment. Shaw <laughs> says, I've never there. seen PBA talk so much about standard. That is true. And uh, that's not because I've played it. I, I didn't really play it that much, but I see it happen. And I like follow the. Twitter's there to support you in the things that you want to whine about. Standard is part of that. No, but I mean. I've I've seen the gameplay and I've I've played it a little bit like I've I've played the I was qualified for the mythic qualifier thingy that you have just, to play. Just say I qualified and limited. PD. Yeah, I, I qualified and limited, so I I played constructed for that. And that's like, but I still had to learn a little Ooh, bit. Oh, that's a great. I watch streams and, but, go ahead. Yeah, look at the chat, man. So the difference between Sharknado versus something like Cryptic Command is flexibility of mana cost it's not the same thing at all like shark okay. cryptic command doesn't put a dude into play it doesn't attack and block it no, just no, but like, stops you from attacking or stops you from blocking sharknado is not like a versatile card it's just a very efficient card like the fact that it costs this and it six and does something is not relevant because that happens like one percent of the time sharknado if you pay six mana to do it is a four four flying flash creature that is uncounterable and draws a card do you print that at a certain rarity in a normal magic set? I mean, if it was exactly that, it wouldn't be good. Exactly. But so it's good because it makes a one one. It also just cycles for two for two better. It's it makes a two like that's the versatility of it. So and you get it's the not like cryptic. It always does the same thing. In, in the you also way. get the added value of the flavor of getting to like sing the shark song depending on the size of the shark you make. <laughs> you also that's can't plus yeah, you can kind of like yeah that card is just. It's just an insane rate. That's what it is. Like, try no matter to, what you're casting it for, it's pretty good. Try to compare Decree of Justice from Scourge in 2003 to Sharknado in 2020. Yeah, that's a pretty good... Uh... They both cycle. One costs one more to cycle than the other. One of them makes a bunch of dudes, and the other one makes one giant dude. One of the giant dudes flies. 
The other one just makes dorks on the ground. Like, go about this uh, Sky Scanner, right? Sky Scanner is like quite a good limited card. Like, it's a one on flyer for three that draws a card is would be somewhat close to playable in some standard formats in a deck that like can use the body with like you would ninja slap something or... like a s and soul artifact on it yeah and soul artifact like it would be close to playable in these Sharnio is that and then it only gets better at every rate after that yeah <laughs> so yeah um, it's a scaling vanilla flyer it's it's that is uncountable and draws a card but anyway we all know that card is broken um i was going to uh we were talking about standard and like it's dead and, and locally it's always been dead and the only the only times that we play is when wizards force us because they make the pptqs or the, they make the competitive circuit standard ptqs pptqs so that's the only time we play it we're forced to play it if we want to play competitive and then if you want to um if you want to play on uh I didn't want to say arena. Um, Magic online. No, the pro tour. The pro tour. They push standard because that's, it makes sense that like that's their pro build, big promo thing. Selling standard packs is the most uh, profitable thing for them. So it just makes sense that they push standard. I don't like. It, it makes sense from a business standpoint from them to do that. So I'm okay with that. But the problem is that it is not what the players want ever. Like the the average player, the player that actually buys a lot of magic cards and boosters, is not someone who plays competitive. Someone who plays commander. It plays like like maybe a little bit competitive, but mostly casual. And it plays F and M. F and M. Oh yeah, that's the only thing I wanted to say is in Quebec specifically, we played standard in like two for two reasons: the PPTQs, the PTQs, and the back when i started playing the only fnm that like the only tournament that you could play that was sanctioned in quebec was the fnm on friday night which was standard. And, which was standard all the time but that was during original ravnica which was great um i mean i don't want to say this because like i think that if you put any format of magic in the uh scenario that we have now which is so many games like i think we there's probably a thousand more games that are of magic that are played in a format in a, any given format nowadays i mean you could probably then, then before you like could probably you mean times a thousand yeah, yeah. okay a thousand so, times more games not yeah just a, next and just another additional no, thousand no no no, 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 no exactly yeah exactly like multiply multiply okay, okay. by a thousand so there are and, a thousand times more games yeah yeah that's than what played know. back in 2005 so i oh, think fact. Uh, but i agree with you that fact. ravnica like standard was great Ra Ra ravnica time spiral standard was... but it was great but it i'm pretty sure that it was only great because we lacked information yeah there was not that many tournaments like there, no pro tours the print the protos were not even standard the or pro rarely. Was, the pro tours weren't standard the only standard events that people would play and would be like nationals regionals and champs F &M. champs, champs. champs if, if yeah. that, if that was, if that was I remember because that was the biggest standard tournament I played in back then. Was like and champs. We didn't have people. We didn't have Twitter. We did like There's Facebook no was starting. Uh, if I don't even know if it was leaked, if it existed back then. Uh, 2005 no it didn't it, no. Facebook didn't have it it may ex exist well, yeah. but there's no it, it wasn't, wasn't used widespread, yeah. exactly so the only time you actually got credible information about a standard deck the is dojo. <laughs> the sure. dojo brain burst <laughs> sure you could brain burst that is a website uh, brain burst sure the old daily and TJ and TG I, yeah daily and TG had one article a week written by Mike Flores that was the competitive article of the week uh, that was recapping deck lists of tournament that were played last week so you had one article in one relevant site that had a couple deck lists i think there was a website with a deck with some deck lists but the the results were like champs and exactly I mean, so we magazines. so so we would have uh, so updates we would update a deck soon. every month like we would we would update okay. a deck every month or every two months yeah. and you would play that significant deck one time a week at fnm yeah. Now you play your standard deck eight hours a day because you're a Twitch streamer or 12 if you're degenerate. 
You don't have to be a Twitch streamer. Man, I think it would be interesting. Hours in a game. I mean, yeah. you probably have a day job. You're probably not yeah. playing Magic at your day job. Or you just choose to, like, yeah, I mean, sleep two hours a day. That's your choice. is a thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> we should just have a huge tournament that's, like, Ravnica Thumb Spiral Standard and see if people were completely That could be this, the, the new set roulette. Yeah. When we're done with all the oh, sets, we could we're just going to choose... But it's, you can't call it a roulette if you don't. Do okay, it. no, no, it's, it's just when we're going to. It's 2005 choose... standard. Like, break this format. Come it's, on, guys. It's not going to take that long before we go through basically every possible option. Are you serious, bro? Okay, not every possible There's option. There's like. Every set, I'm saying. Oh, yeah, every set for yeah, sure. Yeah, not every combination. Configuration. No, no, right? it's... no, because that's not. We don't have enough lifetimes to do that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, you mean of, of sets in general, or do you just mean those two? No, like before we... we... How many different iterations are there of several lets? It's probably... Assuming that we never play them twice. Like... It's not that complicated. If you're doing it once a month and you're doing six sets every time, I mean, at a certain point, you're, like there's only four sets a year. If you're doing this 12 oh. times a year, you're yeah. going to get there. But I mean, like yeah. assuming that you can reuse sets too. You mean, when is the next time you're going to hit the same set roulette? Yeah, that's never going to oh, happen. Oh, I mean, yeah. hopefully, I don't know. Yeah. Like, Couple once we go months. through them... Magic becomes, like, virtual time. reality by then. <laughs> once we go through them, like, one full time, once we're done, like, all sets in the We could room, just we select could just, shit. Yeah. And we could well, just do Ravnica times for all, and it's like... Break the format. P prove come people on, that... Prove come people on, you wrong. millennials. Let's see what can, you can do with these sets. Yeah. Like... With two two flyings for four I or for it, five, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think it's it's a very interesting thought experiment for sure. We're gonna say like the combination pickles and everyone's gonna be looking at us and they're like, "What is pickles? <laughs> What's a brine metal?" Uh, our brine? friend the three three in the chat says, "I've been enjoying a no banless modern." So uh, some organizers just started a no banless modern league. And it's just like they have no boundless modern tournaments. And it honestly looks a lot more fun than like a lot of the real formats that exist. I mean, that's uh, just because a, a niche number of people are playing it. Like if you if you do this, yeah, it often could be enough, broke. Yeah, yeah, it could certainly be broke. I mean, you're doing point. it with band cards for some reason, right? Um the I problem is like that most of these reasons most of these reasons are extremely arbitrary. Yeah. Like so, and they're I all think built in upon each other, right? Sure. Yeah. Whatever you ban a card, it sets the total for the next. I yeah. I'm pretty sure where people are dying on turn two by infecting that format. Yeah, but they there's mental misstep and like gut shot and like. The, the, it's I think. I think it's honestly probably just a more combo legacy. I think. Sure, because that's what no ban list formats tend to do, right? But but I think there's a, still thoughtsies and mental misstep and first negation now. I don't know. It looks kind of interesting. Uh, and he says set roulette, pre modern queue, most formats right now just aren't fun. So basically, like old cards, basically like old magic, not like, like how magic made, like not standard, not new sets, not how magic. People is... like like ma like old sets. Yeah, just like. Magic has changed too much. I don't think. I honestly don't think that magic, the way if it stayed that powerful and like uh, different, I don't think it's wrong. I don't think it's bad. I, it's just not magic like it was. It's just. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of concepts that are just no longer relevant. Like card advantage. Like card advantage used to be relevant in you're killing their guy, or like you're playing a wrath and they're getting three for one. Nowadays, like you play a wrath and your opponent draws two cards and you're like. I thought I thought I was getting the deal out of this. Yeah. Now, like maybe that's because your opponents had skull clumps on their creatures, and I live in two thousand five, but or whatever two thousand four, if you will. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think Wrath of God damage. was. I don't think Wrath of God was a playable card in a world where it, skull clamp was. It, it a was card. not. <laughs> uh, no, if, if there were, and it was legal at the same time. If, it's eighth. Ex exactly. Yeah. If you were not putting creatures, if you didn't have thirty creatures in your deck and, and like ten ways to kill an opposing skull clamp, you were probably losing at Magic at that point. Yeah. So, where were we getting with that? I, I wanted to bridge into, like, pre-modern... Oh, we were talking about Cyril and Ravnica, and I have a phone for this. You said... It, it's, uh, it's written, standard is dead. Standard is dead. <laughs> <laughs> with that said... But it was closed. It was yeah, turned off. Turned off. I, 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 I'll have to start driving the show forward. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't do that. Oh, buddy. It, it's fine. It's fine. We have a few subjects, a few topics oh, tonight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, Standard is dead. Nobody's ever wanted to play Standard Paper except the competitive players, and that's because they have to. They Because that's what Wizards is telling them. And Magic would be more fun if the internet did not exist. But we can't do that. It's, it would be different. Exactly. It would be different because you'd get different decks. Because not everyone would play the same deck. But bro, isn't everyone just a 3-3 three, three in the end? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. It, I, I want to get to the point of this topic is um, the arena basically arena is perfect for standard it's like yes you, you want like a simple like okay first of all you play way more often than, than uh, an average you, player can play can, also just like an average people or an average person can play so much more arena they can play paper no matter how much they like magic or not it's just a lot more a lot easier and it's going to be on mobile by 2021 it's now on mac like it's just it's going to be very accessible it's simple so standard is great uh because you get to play often so it, it, it doesn't you don't care that it rotates like every three months because you, you also play don't pay so many cards. games that you have actually felt like that you've spent the equity that you've gained out of the cards you've either crafted or opened yeah like the rotation speed makes a lot more sense on arena in fact people that's where i was getting people are saying that uh they should just make standard an only online thing and the I mean technically it is. If yeah, it is. It, if it's it, dead it, in it paper, is. technically. But it what is. I'm saying is that they should they should change how they because now they have like not retarded, that's not the word. Uh like they have it is never the word. It is never the word. Delayed? <laughs> not delayed, like old school like settings uh in standard, like rotations only every three months and bannings only whenever, whenever. Like this is fine with with paper because of the the no more limitations. Uh, yeah, kind of. So on arena, they could just do fuck that. There's a rotation every month, and we rotate a set. Like, well, maybe every three months. Like, no, what, just every month. Like we we put in a new set, we take out the old one. I mean, they could. You, like like standard would always be a, a fixed oh you mean sets. okay okay like when they like when they tried to do that in paper and then it didn't work because you're like well i'm gonna buy a card and it rotates in three months yeah but on arena that doesn't it doesn't really matter apply. it doesn't matter yeah so especially now you can play historic and historic is getting more and more popular and it's that's an another topic but i think historic is great and it's the future of magic but it's the future of, future of old formats it's just the future of magic like why because it's point uh, oh boy all right yeah i'm going there don't open that door just yet i mean i, I, I will i don't, I don't know down. what it looks like yeah write that down but let's let's keep on the matter at hand how, how, it how has does... nothing to do with how it looks right now it's okay. the theory behind it historic is the future okay <laughs> um so <laughs> if they made it so that there's a rotation every three months okay. then uh it would keep it a lot more fresh they could also just like just do a shit ton more bannings and unbannings and fixing and whatever because cards stay in your in your collection and you're selling them anyway like, yeah, what's it why like cards no longer have prices i mean the ones online they don't yeah they don't they don't, they don't have so i mean you play a lot a lot more against euros online because people can craft them whereas in 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 paper they have to well, like spend has 80 anyone on the ever card? played paper with euro <laughs> <laughs> has uh, that ever happened yes they have done it in modern uh modern sure. snow band that is now banned because we no longer have astrolabe sure sure yeah yeah true but um yeah so i i think they, they should just do that with standard and just be like give up it does, it's never gonna work in paper instead print commander products print mystery booster that's what they've been doing so that's maybe if they understand that they like should be doing those two things those things work great yeah. mystery boosters like sold throughout the wazoo like and i think mystery boosters, booster is the best set ever mystery booster is essentially what you want to be doing as a commander player You're like yeah. i'm gonna open a pack how many of these cards can i put a commander how many can builders how many commanders can i build with these cards yeah i want and mystery boosters and it's different Honestly, almost every time i'd say as a consumer 
buying those was the best booster pack experience I've ever had in my life. Because you don't know what you're going to get. Because there's yeah, like you have you, there's over no, 1,500 cards. There's no proper chase card in there because yeah. the card pool is so big that you can't be just like... You can't just say, oh, I want this card out of this booster, and that's why I'm buying it. It's not like you're buying an idol. It's not like you're buying a master Mystery pack. booster is much closer to buying a lottery ticket. It is. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And of things, like, of thing, it's a lottery ticket that most cards that you'll open, you'll use at some point, whereas standard is like, I'm buying this booster pack because there's, like, this me thing that I want, or maybe this rare. So, and the rest is, like, cards I don't want. So yeah, these these boosters are are for sure great. And now the people that were playing standard were not buying boosters. Like the competitive players want cards. They don't want to be like be buying packs. If we had the option on Magic Arena not to buy packs and just to buy cards, we would. And that's the the, the whole wild card concept lets us do. But you still have to open packs and you still get packs in events to like grow your collection and get these new wild cards. Yeah. So that's bridging to like historic is the future and it has nothing to do with how the format is right now or if it's good or not if the metagame is healthy like the theory behind it is it personally i think the fact that they can add like 20 to 25 cards every month and a half i think and the that's what they're doing right now with the historic anthology i think it's called i like, just want to add one thing i have not played a game of historic ever me so this is actually an interesting thing to me too. I've never played it either. Okay. But, but he has a theory on it. Yeah, because yeah. It, it's just a how it's made. And it's like they are at, they're controlling they're kind of controlling how the format is gonna be because these twenty to twenty five cards, it's literally been whatever they want. So if they think and cards problem, that they're append, apparently suspending as well because they added a card like Burning yeah, Chancery and then they just suspended it. Yeah, so, and a suspension lets them do, lets them fix super quick, and without anyone whining because who cares? You what's the difference between a suspension and a ban? It's they're testing it out. Like they're they're like, okay, we're gonna suspend this card for a month and see how the metagame reacts without that card, and then after that we take a decision: is it banned or is it unbanned? So, but whenever they make it like another announcement, they're like, okay, this card is now banned. Or this card is unsuspended. I don't think they've. I don't think they have actually unsuspended the card yet. One card. What is it? Field of Dead was unsuspended. Oh really? Yes. Okay, I didn't know that. But <clears throat> so it lets them do that, and you see, there's no backlash to this. As anyone like, I've I've never seen anyone be like, "Fuck!" They like. I mean, people me. My, do, do people talk about historic in general? Yeah, kind of. They okay. started at least. Maybe I mean, just don't I, frequent I, with these people. I I agree. The whining will like be bigger and bigger as, as the more people play the format i, I mean there's, there's there's a new there's no uh, escape there's a new arena challenge that's going to be historic in yeah it's going to be a first big huge uh historic tournament for sure um we're probably gonna have this discussion in a month and it's probably gonna be very different no because I, as i said it has nothing to do with the legal cards the point is wizards control this the, the format as they want i mean so on, much on the, more on... better than modern or pioneer because these old the level of whining uh, <laughs> there's no escape to that it's always going to happen no matter what they do like it's magic <laughs> there's companies in the world that i think are like extremely well run and people still like that's just how life works yes. you have to like one of the best ones is like nintendo and if they just do no pr at all they're just like we're not we don't want to interact with you and because of that they're one of the best at doing that because when they do something it's like once every three months and they just do like the, this paragraph of, of words and they're, they don't respond to anything they're just like this is yeah. what we think Th this is what we're gonna like this is what we're doing and whatever so deal with that <laughs> people are gonna whine no matter what but because wizard has so much control over historic in a great way in a quick way i think they have the ability to shape the best ever eternal format to the point where it could just be like on arena you're playing it because you eventually at least play it because you're playing Saturn, you had those cards and now they're historic and now you're like okay maybe i craft these two cards and i have a deck so it's great for arena and i think it might just in paper become outside of commander of course it just becomes the eternal format that people play in paper 
Like, why wouldn't people play it this far on paper? They can literally, like, in three years or two years. You mean you want them to make historic be a paper format? I mean, what, what's stopping anyone from that format being a like you? You could have a tournament that's historic. I don't know. It's you, like you know. They, they they printed a Pioneer like six months ago, and that yeah. feels like it just died. Yeah, but that well, the first thing the, the thing that killed it is COVID. First, sure, is it was like right at its peak, like all the PPTQs or whatever they're called, WP and Qs, competitive. They were events. all competitive <laughs> events and GPS and 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 Modo. So. It was at first at COVID with COVID, it did great because uh, people were playing Pioneer on Magic Online, and they killed Banning all the PTQs. But they, they killed uh, all the PTQ. Like, there's no competitive gameplay on on Magic Online right now because they just cut all the PTQs like a month and a half ago or two months ago. So now Pioneer is like nobody's played Pioneer. There are more months. people that have submitted deck lists online for formats like Popper than for Pioneer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I am not surprised. So, Pioneer was a good idea, but like I think COVID killed it, and just paper taking off again in stores and tournaments and paper. It's gonna take a while. So it's not only gonna gonna take a while. It's only gonna be able to support the formats that people already liked. You won't be able to like try new things because people were like, "Well, what if COVID two point happens?" Yeah, people might just be scared of. So, having, like, yeah. we've had modern FNM for roughly ten years now, and it is essentially the only people I can get in store for competitive events, and it's FNM. Yeah, because that's a format that is people have parts it's for no, non-rotating, and you can play essentially anything and do decent with it. You can play the cards you want, but I think a story could a, easily become that in a significant card pool and like 10 years of magic for a lot of people is much greater than their collection so like if you started playing magic in let's say 2014 and you've been playing until now i mean you've collected enough cards that playing modern is, is feasible before pioneer was actually introduced yeah and like you liked playing those cards in those years and like you got new additions from new sets or from old sets and like you already have this let's say Eldrazi deck from Oath of the Gatewatch, and all you do is like, okay, you got to spend some money like on these noble hierarchs, but like that's the only expensive other card that you're putting in your deck, and like all the other cards come from Oath of the Gatewatch except for like Temple of uh, Eldrazi Temples, which they reprinted in a Master Set. Yeah, like your deck, you didn't spend that much more money, and had you been a Commander player, you just bought a new deck, and it would have cost you about the same amount. Amount, and they're both non-rotating formats. Yeah, but so. With Historic, what's cool is, like, imagine in two years, they release 20 to 25 cards every month and a half, and they choose what they want to release. So, at first, I think they were, like, cautious, and they just put cards that are cool and people like. Like Soul Warden? Yeah, and, like, Mirror's Wake and some Goblins and stuff like that. Outdated it's... cards that they know won't break because they didn't yeah, break but, back but then. they're all cards that people like, though. Yeah, like, like Mirror's Wake is, is a great magic card. It won Worlds in 2000. Really query, and, like, it's just fun cards that people like so people want to play the format to try those because cards. they're defining cards and people want to play them because they want to build around iconic them. cards like yeah. kind of so it, at first sure they don't have that much impact because they're they're trying i think they're being cautious but if they decide that they just want these cards to define more of the formats then just it's so easy to just ones. make 25 cards that are just all you know these are all going to be cards that are going to be played so that you ch you shade the format. So yeah, mad like I I would think that in like three years we will play historic and paper, and it's going to be the most popular eternal format. Would you think that they should make cards for historic, like they did modern masters, and uh, not modern masters, uh, modern horizons, modern horizons? Yeah, but that's essentially what they're doing. What they can do, but they have a lot more control because the, the, they did the with historic is small right now. Like jumpstarts like funneling yeah. in 500 cards yeah, yeah. into historic yeah yeah jumpstart is that yeah it's jumpstarting a, your collection yeah <laughs> so yeah and i forgot about jumpstart but jumpstart is exactly what i mean like it's exactly what i'm talking about uh but they did it in a bigger way uh modern horizons the problem with it was that they it's a, i think it was power a level. Reset, <laughs> but yeah power level but also they have kind of like no control about the other cards that are in the format so 
maybe they thought these cards are all fine. They all, they all match the power level they that we want to do. They printed a bunch of cards that got other cards banned. Yeah, Which, also. to be fair, certain of these cards should have been banned. Like, Urza's the card that put Mox Opal over the edge. Yeah. Or apparently now Astrolabe, but that's also a Modern Horizon card. But, but in Historic, they don't have, or they have way way less cards of these because how many card, how many sets are legal in Historic? Like, well, it's Excel and 15? up. So 15? I mean, it's like four years of magic. But it's about that. Yeah. You don't need you don't need to count. Yeah, well I'm trying to think of like the it's other a, weird sets, but they It's a bit more than a dozen. It's like four a year plus the anthology cards, I guess. Yeah. The anthology so. cards now with all the ones that they've been adding, it's like a small set. Like they haven't cracked a yeah. hundred. They've been adding like what's it, twenty five to like thirty every time. Yeah. So they've it's, cracked it's maybe like a small set. Now. Yeah. So basically they, they can build upon that whereas modern or pioneer they could never they, they they were never able able to build upon and shape that format because it's like they made modern and it was already way too big they made pioneer and it's like they had to ban a million cards so well we haven't banned a new one they Adjusted yeah they unbanned one yeah that's a good that's a good thing that they finally understand that they cannot ban cards like pioneer has changed so much since they first banned Odom Nissa. Like Yes. I still think there are cards that need to be banned, but that's that's for just for later on. Yeah. Yeah. I also agreed with that, but it's a good start that they unban something and see maybe if that changes the fact that it's so bad right now because Inverter is too good and there's like a few decks that are playable. Maybe Odom Nissa will make one or two more decks and then that'll seem so much more healthy. So it's a good way to start with unbans then starting with bands when, when we get to this this pioneer thing i have a great rant on on inverter so you can go i was pretty much done okay for you modern players that have been hollering as hard as possible to unban twin let me put you into perspective splinter twin is a four-man enchantment that goes on a guy that dies to an instant speed removal spell okay in modern <laughs> This combo was banned because it was, because it was too good and it oppressed a whole bunch of formats. <laughs> you could not kill with your lightning bolt a 1-4. Now, let's try to upgrade this into Pioneer Perspective. So, Deceiver Exart dies to removal, Splinter Twin does nothing by itself, and the blue-red shell in which you were playing this had access to cards like Lightning Bolt, Snapcaster Mage, and maybe some counter magic and draw spells, which feels very normal let's say and could almost be outdated nowadays on the power level of m19 year cards now if you are integrating this type of shell and adding like 10 times more power behind it you are turning a four man enchantment into a four mana six six flyer that exiles your deck which is essentially a drawback that if you kill it doesn't matter and now you're inserting a Planeswalker that, has, that costs 4 mana and a creature that costs 2 mana that if you kill, doesn't matter. Your opponent's still going to win. You are adding to this deck Thoughtseize, which is disruption that this Splinter Twin Menace did not have access to. And you're also adding cards like Dig Through Time as a card in Vegin Engine that th this deck did not have. How is it possible that it is legal and feasible to keep inverter in pioneer but that splinter twin is banned in modern now i don't want splinter twin unbanned in modern i just want inverter banned from pioneer but the the answer to that is very simple they banned splinter twin when they literally had not a single employee that was the same as now <laughs> like the, the the okay that's not true there were still a few employees that are there, but they mostly don't really take the decisions like Mark. Are you are, are you saying that they should unban twin? Um, I think. Are that, you that guy? What no. is the official well, <laughs> Pascal take on this? Please? Yes, but also, like, not just because I like. Do twin. you acknowledge that Splinter Twin is a worse deck than Inverter? I, I just, I, I'm just gonna finish up on that modern thing. I just think that modern the ban list makes no sense. It's literally like, oh, at that moment, like four years ago, that's how we wanted modern to be, so we banned it. It made sense back then uh, to us, and we were too stubborn to ever like say, oh, we were wrong. Like, let's put that back in. I actually have a great example of this. 
I think Green Sun Zenith is was one of these cards. Green Sun Zenith was banned from Modern at a time where they chose to ban a card from every other deck at that Pro Tour, and the Zoo deck ha needed to have something banned, and they decided that it was Green Sun Zenith because Green Sun Zenith into a Dry Arbor was too strong. But that's too good, though. Like, that wouldn't be... They would have to ban Triad Arbor, I think. Is banning Dryad Arbor, which is probably a very bad design space to start with, ever something that they will re-want to explore if they see that they need to ban it? Like, lands becoming creatures is a thing. Lands being creatures is a different thing. It makes these things, such as Green Sense Zenith, like, a fine magic card if Dryad Arbor doesn't exist. Like, Rampant Growth is not an overpowered magic card. It is when it costs one mana. And then it becomes, I mean, and then and then becomes like a Tarmor Gorf later I mean, and something more gigantic, like a Questing Disnight. If you had Dried Arbor, if if you let Green Sun Zenith legal with Dried Arbor, you it's the same thing as letting Dry, uh, Death Rite Shaman legal. It's the I, same. I, I agree, it and I I believe that that's a sh that's a positive change. Even though you're changing one band to another, Green Sun Zenith is a card that opens deck building possibility. Whereas I don't think that having Dried Arbors in your lands that you can fetch out. Uh, and I actually disagree on that a lot. I think Dried Arbor creates a lot more interesting and unique and gameplay that is like um, does it get, innovative. Like does it get arc banned from like coverage? Maybe maybe you can uh, like no the, the, no the from the vault one that looks like a forest. Yeah, but you, do you understand what I mean? Like the sure. fact that you can fetch in in a Dried Arbor in a deck that like polymorphs it or you know you know what I mean? Like sure. It, it creates so much more different gameplay and unique gameplay than Green Sun Zenith, which is the, like, Green Sun Zenith is Magic 2020. It's like a card that reduces variance. So why isn't it legal in 2020? Sure. I mean, that that's fine, but it can't be at the same time Dry Dryad Arbor, and I that's think that Dryad Arbor is better for the game. Do, do fetch lands need to be better in Magic? I mean, it's not just fetch lands. I mean, Dry Arbor lets you do weird like there's been weird magic decks that existed because of i have arbor. had dried arbors like be sacrificed to dread return yeah i've done this that's great and like what? why is that great it's cool you get to like when you're the first person who thinks about like this thing that you can do with dried arbor because it's such a such a, such a weird card it's, it's great i mean feeling. i think it's something that you can do in your commander deck why do you need to have a place out of these cards in your combat like i, 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 I want bar? i want in for at all formats to have like play patterns that are not found in other formats and i think dry arbor is good at doing that okay. like isn't it that great that you you're playing as infect and they kill you with a dried arbor that's fucking great sure <laughs> it's really annoying sure it's really annoying but it's can't be mad that like I, I, I guess not because like they're doing it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, it's like because old-fashioned way is twentying your opponent. You got it, man. <laughs> like you deserve it. You deserve it. I was dumb. I tapped out, and you like tripled become immense to me or whatever. <laughs> but it was probably a team or battle rage somewhere um, in there. Someone said something in the chat that I noticed earlier. Can you scroll up just a little bit? Absolutely. It was talking about the historic, and I think it was. Um, Pale of Awesome. Yeah, Pale of Awesome. I think the most important aspect of Historic is they're missing is that the ban list is supposed to be fluid. Tying into paper makes them wary of just banning stuff whenever they feel like, which they've been doing. So I, I totally agree with that. And it's one flaw with what I said, and I'm sure there's many more, of course. But I think one big flaw of what I said is be it, being fluid at the bannings and be able to suspend stuff. It's something that you can't really do in paper as much because people are going to be mad that he bought the cards that I'm kind of like fine with. And it might be a reason why like historic might never be a thing. But on the other hand, if in three years they controlled the format so much, they, they just never have to ban cards. Why not? Like that might happen. Who knows? Um, uh, says, why is GSZ into dry and wars than land war else? Because it's not always just that. Like there's only... Okay, so the problem with that is that your deck that's playing four land whales and four elvish mystic will sometimes lose, sometimes lose because it's drawing too many. The deck that's playing four land war, four land war elves and four green sun zenith and a dryad arbor and draws questing. It's gonna half do that time more. Yeah, like it. It's just 
the, the versatility the versatility is unreal on that rate because it's just so much easier um okay but they said it would it was banned because of dryad yeah but i mean I, I don't know how to explain much more. Yeah, no, <laughs> like I, I've I'm, made my I'm point. Gonna put it in layman's term. What's that? You can't way, have both the way legal. I the understand same. it is that if you play a land war elf for one green mana, you 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 don't still have a land war elf in your deck, right? But if you play a green mm. sun zenith for one mana and get a land war elf out of it, you still have a green sun zenith in your deck. Ah, uh, that's not relevant. No, like, it's not relevant. No, a one card in your fifty card deck is not right. like it's it's something. It's something. It's like yeah. a few percent, but it's not. It's certainly not the reason for for that for sure. sure. Um. Yeah. So we got over that. Um. Okay. We talk about old gameplay and stuff like that. Let's talk about set roulette. I, I, I tasked you with looking at set roulette for I today. Did. I did. And uh, thoughts on the format. Um, okay, I, I'm going to put people in context. Set roulette for this month is... Uh, Kaladesh. Actually, Fix, can you uh, show Quip. chat? Yeah. It's Kaladesh, I will Odyssey, Evan. It's it. uh, World Awake, Fifth Dawn, 10th uh, edition. edition, and... Prophecy. Phil knows what's up. Yeah, the, so it's five sets. Five sets. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. We've tried that one before. So you get like foil and a whole bunch of other cards that you read the game text and you're like, well, this was cool when Banner Burn existed. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> our stream. Uh, where do I see the sets? I'm on the MPG Melee. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're good on Legal sets. Page. 10th edition, Odyssey, Galadish, I just, I just, I just named them. Prophecy, Is it, I think. Fifth Dawn. Can you? Uh, I can link them. To no, no, but I, the chat. they are not. They're seeing it, aren't they? Yes, they are. Okay, so if they're seeing it, can you uh, right-click and project to us so that we can see it too to that third screen instead of chat? Do, do you need to? Do you need to know these six sets, or you want um, to see cards? Or? I like looking at what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Um, Spend a lot of time in front of the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk to myself in a mirror. <laughs> I look at myself. I do it without staring at, the, at my own reflection. Uh, which is constantly. Look, with that head, you have to look at your head in the mirror a lot <laughs> so, to make sure you didn't miss a spot. I so, wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> certainly wouldn't know. <laughs> so, um, uh, funny part, they cannot see the set right now, the way that it's crawled. Felix. Oh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> um, that. So set roulette is something we do every month. Now uh, you can go look at a few exclamation point tournaments in the chat. You'll have a link to where you can find this specifically. It tells you all the rules. Essentially, we randomize six magic sets, two big sets, one core set, three small sets. There's no ban list. And these are the legal sets. We do that. We randomize the sets live on stream eight days before the tournament. So everyone has eight days to break the format of these specific six sets. No ban list. We've had one where Mana Drain, Skull Clamp, and Mind Twist could be played as four ofs. We had one where uh, the, the, the one right after that, the power level was like so much lower that like it didn't really feel like anyone solved the format in eight days. Like what, what, which set really are we talking? Uh, about? The last one. It was the deck that won was basically a copy of the Seismic Swan Cascade deck that existed in Standard back then, uh, back in the days. Okay. It was like basically the same deck. Okay. It was like playing forty land. Oh, you. So the un, the innovation and the reason why his deck was so much better than all the versions of Seismic Swans, I think, was that he was playing like twenty cycling ends. Okay. He had. Onslaught and Amonkhet Cycling Lands, I think. So it's great because you want to play. He, like he was playing lands. Naya Colors. He's playing five colors, I think. Okay. He had Grand Coliseum, uh, I believe City of Brass, Reflecting Pool, um, maybe another one. I don't remember, but like you could play easily five colors. Okay. Um, he he won. Um, there was like a cool deck in the format too, where it was Seismic Swan also but in like a Grixis or blue-red shell. And it was playing Filter Lands because it has Shadowmoor. 
So you could cast a Sesame. Beseech the Queen. You had Chains of Plasma, which also combos with Swans. Because you it, get to shoot it. You get to draw your deck. It doesn't kill your opponent, but it gets to draw your deck until you draw your Seismic Assault and you cast it. Mm -hmm. So that was like a Grixis or a blue-red kind of like control deck that was playing that. Um, I don't actually remember. Oh, the deck that the uh, Channel Fireball guys were playing. So Ben White's Jarvis U, uh, Ari Lax. Ari Lax top hated with the deck and some other guys. They were playing a Esper God Pharaoh's Gift deck with uh are given restoration instead of like i know what that refurbish does. so it it's was like refurbish it just costs two colors two blue it was playing sphinx of the steel wind so you could bring That's it back with idea. that and return it with god's pharaoh's gift yes champion of wits because it's legal um like a control shell had some rats had mana leak i think uh just looked like a great deck uh but apparently it had a really bad matchup against the blue red swans deck and they like, I remember Jarvis was in feature match and you just like faced it two rounds in a row or something. Uh, but their deck was really cool. So that's set roulette. Uh, if you're not hooked yet, then I'm not your friend. Yes, <laughs> like, uh, you do not know would, how to build good decks. Uh, we would not get along. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just great. Uh, and people have been loving it. It is by far the most popular thing that we're doing. One thing you can't do with set roulette is you can't go online and copy a deck list and play a deck. Here's That's a very interesting tidbit of information. Go ahead. Philip was actually on the first test of Test Relay. Yeah. I, I was on Test Team! I talked briefly about how I th the reason I wanted to do this Test Relay thing is that because I did it in paper in a different, slightly different version with a local friends. He's one of those local friends. And um, Prophecy was actually in the one that we did, and now it's there too. Uh, yeah, it's I terrible. had a playset of um, Citadel of Pain in my mono red sideboard. <laughs> Citadel of Pain, yep. man. That's uh, that's how I was beating Teferi because the Dominaria was one of our of our of our sets, and uh, my mono red deck had a very hard time against Teferi. <laughs> so if they were tapping out, well, we can't get rid of all my spells. So set we had we had the sets right there. Uh, Phil, what did you brew up? For that tournament, uh, I brewed a mono red wildfire planeswalker deck. No, no, I'm talking the new one. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, for the new one, I wanted to start playing again the card that is banned in modern, Crack Clan Ironworks. I'm sure Mr. Uh, Canister would be very happy for this one. Um, there are actual factual eggs. In Odyssey... Yeah, but that, they're not good with KCI, though. I mean, but you can't call an eggs deck an eggs deck if you don't put eggs in it, right? Yeah, it's true. They are you, actual, factual eggs. Yes. <laughs> so, you get to put eggs in your deck. You get to uh, you get to play um, Chromatic Star, because it's in 10th edition. And you get to... You don't have uh, a second Sunrise for 3 mana. You get one for 7 mana <laughs> in Roar of Reclamation. Everyone gets to put all their artifacts and chance back in play. Generally, it's probably just going to profit you. And you actually get to find this Ironworks through um, Invention Sphere. Uh, Inventor Sphere. Okay, yeah. You can sack the Inventor Sphere to get, so to, to get Ironworks. You can play Serum Visions in that deck, too, which is pretty good with eggs. In, in, in original Ironworks, back when it was Standard League, we also played cards like Condescend, because it would gave, it gave you Disruption, and you could actually just Condescend your opponent's spell or your own spell for zero mana and just try to. Yeah. Um, just another Alex says, I'm crucibling back a Cephalid Coliseum right now, and it feels great. Yeah, those two things, those two things are legal, 10th edition and Odyssey. Unfortunately, Dredge is not, but whatever. Um, Morin, Morin, as I says, uh, do you play set related on paper live, or do you do an open tournament on NTGO? I missed that part. Yeah, it's all on Magic Online. Yeah, this was like we started that during COVID, so the point was doing that online. Um, also, it's at, it's actually. I, I never thought I'd say that, but it's so much better on Magic Online than it is in paper. I mean, you, you can't always find the cards. You, you'd rather play, play with physical is cards. Playtesting is deck. slightly clunkier. Like, you can you can always just sharpie everything if you want. It's just not as fluid, elegant, not, not as elegant. visually elegant. Uh, Magic Online actually lets us do all this. Yeah, Magic Online. And plus, most of the cards in our set roulettes are cheap. Because like, everything sucks. I mean, it's, no one plays these cards. Magic on. It's not just that everything sucks. The deck that was playing Mind Twist, Mana Drain, Skull Camp. These card, these three cards are not worth anything because they're not played in relevant formats. Like, and they're like, there are bad or they're, they're, bad they're restricted or whatever. whatever. So it's 
yeah it's it's much easier to do that on magic online uh i honestly if i was to do that again with local friends i think i would just like say hey let's just do it on magic like bring six battleship laptops, and, laptop. like, let's do it in a bar or whatever like um yeah this new format we have um okay so you talked about that the x deck that, the kca deck that you want to play did you actually, did you actually build a list or? i did not okay I do not. Uh, I'm. Everyone talked about it. Like we have a Discord. If you're not in our Discord, you should be. Uh, there's a set roulette, uh, like channel, and people. It's crazy because people match make, and there's like you can find a game at almost any time, any day in the eight days. It's been like that the last time, and this one is like even more. It's so active. It's awesome to see, and people like because it's new and refreshing because they get to do this in a limited amount of time yeah and people some people it's just essentially like, like pro, tour plus to, pro, pro tour testing yeah it's pro that's what uh, uh, Remy Forci played last time and he tweeted he's like that's the best experience I've had playing magic since like I don't know when, when last time when I won a pro tour and I like I, he, was was playing, he was playing like the best version of the deck for the tournament yeah so he's like that's the first time that I have this feeling again where like he didn't have the best deck last time. He had a good deck. I think he top aided or his friend top aided with the same deck. But like he he's like the experience, like the the I was actually like stressed between rounds and I was curious to see what people would play and I, like I also had the same thing. When I when I when we play tested this in paper, like you know what people can bring. You don't know what people saw and what people didn't see, and you don't know how much time people have been spending on are iterating certain certain what level things. are they exactly like. and what do they conf what is their configuration the most stressful thing is what did i miss yeah like how stupid am i going to look when my opponent goes this into that and this and i'm like how did you do that and then you look at because it's open deck list so yeah. you can in, when, once the tournament starts you can see the number of archetypes and all that stuff instantly so start run one starts and you just look at that and you're like fuck i messed up <laughs> exactly and when i started watching pro tours when they started being uh video coverage it was about in 2005 and what i really enjoyed about watching those events is back then there was such such less information there is nowadays you would discover pro tour decks you would discover interactions and these interactions were new to you and it would give you a reason to watch people get destroyed by other let's say slightly more intelligent individuals that actually found these things cobbling uh <laughs> things of this nature and <laughs> That was really interesting from a, uh, a viewer's perspective because you felt like it was also a learning experience and not only a viewing experience. And Magic has such a high barrier to entry from a viewer's perspective. Like, you can't watch a game of Magic and enjoy it if you do not know how to play. So everyone that normally goes and watches a stream, whether it be SCG, Pro Tours, or whatnot, um, is going to look at a match and enjoy it because they understand what's going on because... They know what the cards do. Take the feeling of you don't know what the cards do and having a learning process unfold in front of your eyes and like trying to understand everything that's going on at a high caliber level interaction between professional magic players. That does not exist anymore. Yeah. We have deck lists a week before the tournament exists and people already have side three different definitive sideboard plans against every deck in the format when they sit down or to play around one yeah the, the i think this was all like my child my childhood was destroyed when i played the the oko pro tour and like i registered into the tournament and i had not seen any of the deck lists yet and i was 99 percent sure that the metagame was going to be more than 50 percent oko decks like in blue like specifically the same shell of 32 cards and it was more than that and that's like, isn't that fucking boring? Like, exactly. there's no, uh, you're just like, okay, I, I'm going to play against that half my rounds. And like, I put this card in my deck that's good against it. If I draw it, I might win. <laughs> like, and like from a viewer's perspective, you're just rooting for the, for the bat, for like, in this case, Oko as the bad guy to lose because there's so much of it. You just want to see a David and Goliath happen and be like, who broke the format? Who's going to topple this giant? Who's smarter than everyone? And the answer is no one. <laughs> Which is kind of anticlimactic. Yeah, so it, 
yeah it set roulette is great for this and so okay let's talk a bit about set roulette especially the format this weekend because uh i've seen i follow the conversation a little bit so i see the decks that are played uh, unfortunately it looks like uh the best deck for this one is marvel with like jace and terastodon and and it's like it's the, the old shell that kind of sucks i think that kills a little bit of the vibe of set roulette because it's the deck is like 20 of the same cards that were in that deck before it's gonna happen with powerful sets like kaladesh uh, and it's not just the marvel deck apparently the other one of the other good decks is the aggro like artifact deck with that plays Inventor's Apprentice, Bowmat, uh, Toolcrafter's Exemplar, Scrounger, Vehicles. Cupter. Like, it's all the cards You from need a driver's set. license for this set roulette. <laughs> We're going to ID you. Um, so, I hope that there is something more to this one. And I think I hope that there's like a KCI deck. Um, I want someone to cast Upheaval, float two mana, drop Zombie Infestation, and put a gut... A, Giant pile of zombies in the play. I I tried to build a deck with uh you have Squee Buried Alive and Zombie Infestation. Mm -hmm. And there's uh there's like Wild Mongrel and like maybe there's like a black green deck that you could play. Um is Cabal Third no Cabal Third Cabal is uh, Judgment. It's Judgment. So anyway. You don't really have good discard spells. You're like the best discard value is, is distress. From tenth edition, which is yeah. a which is a Kamigawa reprint. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I I'm gonna if I have a bit of time this week, I'm gonna try to like build a few. I try to always try to like make an article that I can put out just a little bit, just to actually like because we do coverage, so just to set the stage so that people watching that are watching have an idea of what they're gonna be looking at. But. If you bring four main deck Tanjai Justice and four main deck Viridian Shaman, you will not lose a lot of games. Because both these things have giant artifacts they want to be killing. Yeah, but like Marvel, if you just yeah, of course Marvel doesn't care, and and you hit. But let's say we're talking about like copters and stuff. Yeah, it's. I mean, our, the star artifacts seems good in the format for sure. Yeah. Um, maybe even like needle is a main deck card because it hits Jace, Marvel, and Copter, and maybe Scrounger. Like Psychotog, sure. It's yeah. like a dog. If if Psychotog is a thing amongst all these things. <laughs> um so yeah i'm interested to see how it goes it doesn't seem like there's one obvious best deck like the first i remember the first one um and i'm kind of biased because that happened in the first ever set that we did on, on magic online um the the best deck was model black it was a what zombies deck. saga with bannings because we had to use a legacy ban list long story short just long story i'm not going to tell it but basically Tolarian, Tolarian academy and yagma tool were banned but it literally didn't matter those two cards were probably not playable anyway in that sense Tolarian academy and yagma tool not playable. there's no artifacts and yagma tool you need like rituals and boxes and load like you need unfair magic mana. cards yeah and there wasn't that many outside of dark ritual so the best deck was mono black zombies because there was like almond kit was a legal set uh no it you was saga dark ascension so you had grave crawler and jazz messenger you had saga so you had did you have score innistrad so you had uh wait do you have innistrad or you had you had diagraph goal but what that wasn't from diagraph goal is an innistrad card yeah but it it's also a corset there, card. there wasn't it, there's a it's a corset also it was card. corset it was some corset okay. i think it was 2020 uh, uh no it was the, the it was the one that has the liliana for zombies for zombies is it's in, uh, I mean, 19, 19 i think yeah, yeah so it was in 19 so you had diagraph goal and that plans walker that pl that place walker by the way is insane in the zombies deck sure. it, it was just never a zombies deck in standard but in that deck it was insane um there was friction goal which is an antiquas that's a zombie that you could play in saga most lists were not playing it though uh you had you had blood soaked champion not a zombie but a really good aggressive mono black card you had in two drops you had highborn highborn ghoul that you want you could play and uh, there was blood scrivener which is That's really good in the deck. Card. yeah it's a zombie yeah. and it's you were playing dart ritual and friction tower so it was easy to empty your end and the most broken thing of all that was um contamination your opponent does not play magic. stitcher supplier was also in that 
Because that's not 19, yes. Yeah. So you had Dark Ritual Contamination in a deck that can always upkeep it, upkeep it for free, almost for free every time. Oh, Graveyard Marshal. Graveyard Marshal which is, is an insane zombie that's really good with Contamination. Yeah. card, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that was a deck. You had Duress in the sideboard. You had like messed up sideboard black cards from like weird sets. Um, oppression. You had Oppression yeah. in a sideboard, yeah. Like that deck was insane. And you could build it in many different ways because there's so many zombies you could play. You could sideboard into a different deck. You like, you could be mid range, full aggro, control. Like it could, it could just be anything. And zombie combo. It was about fifty percent of the metagame. It was by it won the tournament. It was like six the out of eight spots. The best way you beat contamination is play the mono black deck. Yeah, kind yeah. of. There was like a nabs on deck that made the finals that was playing uh, disciple of grace. I think it's a one one pro black for two cycling. I was playing that main That's an deck. invasion card. No, it's a saga it's a, it's a card. card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, an, there's an there's an invasion version that gives pro black to other guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so an acolyte. Yeah. So it, that card was legal, and people Dabs on deck was playing it main deck. So and that, that that sounds very they like lost. Os, like onslaught block constructed where like this slide deck was playing main deck silver knight just to beat goblins. Yeah, I mean silver knight is like a fine card at least. It's a oh. two to first strike. The other thing is a fucking one. Is a one? It's a, it's a one cycling, two. but it's a one two. Uh, maybe yeah. But There's square stats. Anyway, that deck made the finals, beat a lot of zombie X, then had lost a zombie in the finals. It's mm. hilarious. Um. So, yeah, and then the second one was uh, the Mind Twist one, which was surprisingly kind of healthy. There was different decks that were all resolving around these three cards. Mind Twist, my Mana Drain, and what was the third one? Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp was obviously way better than these two. Other balanced cards. format! But, I mean, it was balanced as in all the decks were around these three cards. You had three forms of cancer, and they all balanced each other out. At least it's Rock, Paper, Scissors. It's not just <laughs> one deck. And it's like the the guys that won right, was Ben White's in the finals Jarvis. I think they had the best version, and none of them, no other players had a version that's, that was like kind of similar to them. It was in the same direction, but not the same the same uh, version. So, uh, yeah, this weekend I'm hoping that it's not just Marvel, but I'm sure it won't be. I'm sure it won't be. People are wrong. It's too I mean, early. Still too early. We're just Tuesday. It's only a that, that and like if you just told everyone Marvel's great either people are going to play or they come and come equipped to beat it so yeah so we'll see we'll see um oh thank you Alexi appreciate it um now pre-modern what, what else did we have you said pre-modern we have a ban list announcement we do have ban list announcement oh sure let's go to ban list real quick yeah let's get that out of the way Discord. Boom. There it is. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. We we already talked about oath of Nissa. We did. So we can skip that. I think we we we've established that oath of Nissa being unbanned is great. The fact that Inverter is still not banned is not great. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that sums it up. <laughs> I remember uh, you three months ago telling me differently, but that's fine. Why? You said, eh, they didn't ban anything. Format's fine. There's I like mean, 10 different decks. We could like play other stuff. Like, Inverter's not too bad. No, I mean, it's fine as in like the, the win rate of the deck is actually like there are other play. Like, I played Breach a lot. Yeah. And I have a good matchup. I think I have a good matchup against Inverter, but also Inverter is kind of hard to play. So, might have played against bad people, but. I mean, you can't, you can't say necessarily your breach deck is balanced interactive magic. So having a having a great deck beat another great deck is it's a, is it's fine. an editorial format. Yeah. You're gonna have combo decks. Yeah. I have to live with it. It doesn't matter if it's interactive or not. Like, your combo deck doesn't have access to counter spells, infant like insane draw spells, discard and yeah. but uninteractable combo. When I said that three months pieces. ago, is the data that they had on the deck is that inverter was forty nine percent like. But they gave us the same information three months later. Because there was no Pioneer played. <laughs> probably. That's I, probably why they didn't I don't know what they said. What did they actually say about Inverter in that article? What did Mr. Duke write in his paragraph? Can you scroll down, Felix? Mr. Yes. Adore. This one? No. 
Pioneer. We want we want we want Pioneer one. You guys don't have Pioneer. There it is. Yeah, yeah but we, that, want that, we, we want to know what the ba- we know what the bands are. We want to know why they didn't ban Invert. Oh, there you go. Since I launched Pioneer last last year, since. Green Ponder's fine. Normal Ponder's not fine. Okay, well, they just don't say a word about it. No, they say it at the bottom. We are keeping an eye on the evolution of Combo Decks in your environment. Although the perception that Combo Decks have dominant win rates isn't backed up. So. Uh, okay, so they're just saying that it's still the case on Magic Online. But as I said, there was like almost. There are no less events played. of Pioneer played on Magic Online than there are Popper tournaments. Yeah. But, on the other hand, they can't make a move based on no data either, even if everyone says that it's too good. I mean, if you don't have data on something that everyone says is too good, and people refuse to okay. play your format... Everyone says that's too good is about 500 people on Twitter. Okay, <laughs> let me rephrase that. If people are unwilling to play your format because they find it not enjoyable because there's a certain strategy that is stopping them from being innovative... Why would they do so? But I, I I disagree that people are not playing Pioneer. Not playing Pioneer because they can't. There's no event on Magic Online, and then people don't play Paper. So, so then, so why did they on Mana Card? Probably because they don't care. They're just like, I mean, I think it's a good thing that they unban it. But my point is, maybe they're just like, eh, it's a dead format. Let's just do things that people will be happy about, like. Well, I'd, I'd be... That's not what I think. I'd, I'd be about them ban- banning Inverter. I mean, you, but, like, I think... You, by banning cards, de facto, you're going to make some people mad. Sure. By banning cards, you're never going to make someone mad. Right? It's risky. I mean, I'd be, I'd be mad if you unbanned Twin and Pioneer. Uh, unbanned and modern. Twin and Modern. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> Let's go... Back up and look at that. The rest of the the bannings. With that said, I think inverter should be banned. I I think dig should be banned. I think dig as a power level of a card is kind of like a bit too good for pioneer in some way. But I don't know. At, at least Honestly, if it's been too, it's been if, too long. If they started that. with dig, I'd I'd actually acknowledge that as being a step towards understanding that the the deck has an unreasonable power level. By unbanning Oath of Nissa, that does not address the elephant in the room. Like, yeah. you could you could have banned Thassa's Oracle, and I'd be like, at least their their deck is slightly worse. Now, their deck is not worse. Their deck did not change. Yeah, but I think what you have to understand is that Wizards don't think that there's a problem in the format. And it might actually... They Play might, more Pioneer! But they might, be, they might be correct, because there's... N- their data they have is much bigger than any data that any player has played with, like by far. I, I, There's I no sure, play. I There's... surely hope so. So uh, anyway, I, I I don't have anything else to say because I just haven't played Pioneer in so long. I I, I just wanted to make a side quote. I don't generally advocate very harshly on certain bands. I rather cards not be banned in formats, and I don't. To specifically target cards as much as i feel that things like teferi in standard and reclamation are like unenjoyable play patterns i think that them coexisting in standard is much less worse than having to play against something like inverter sure historic there's band and like we literally talked about we're not going to go to over each cards because we both we never can, played a game of historic we can with no games played what do you think about the fifth card which says burning tree emissary is suspended i mean it was in the most played deck and that's it dig through time was in the most played pioneer deck they didn't change it yeah but the, the there was also that deck was also like had a huge win rate pro- apparently it was like the best deck okay that's what i saw i mean there was also not that many tournaments all the tournaments were third party <laughs> like our tournaments and and our turn in our tournament i think the top eight was like s- five or six roll in the top eight and of like a 60 something player tournament and that was the best card in the deck i mean it's that's what makes the broken draws because of amber cleave okay so you just dump a couple of chaos plays, you attack, and put the camera on something? Yeah, and I think there's something else with it. I don't remember. That's like really good with Burning Tree Missary. But yeah, that, I, that's just 
this the simple reason and nexus everyone hates nexus so that that's 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 true yeah and the rest like uh, the, these cards were suspended already they're just bad um modern the ban astrolabe um so they Which also un- about that plus yeah. <laughs> they also unbanned all the basic lands at the same time which is great because it well, i think this is a, I, I, okay let's read what they said about it because it i think that was the number one reason why people hated astrolabe is because they could not play with their nice lands that they've been collecting for like 20 years seriously seriously it makes all the basic lands unplayable you cannot play basic lands you're uh, suboptimal if you're playing basic lands in your deck so in, in, in your astrolabe deck huh in your no astrolabe deck. In, your, in all of your decks you're just telling them you're not playing astrolabe oh uh. And there's no downside to playing basic lands. I, I have a hard time with making this a compelling argument. It, it, okay, it started as a joke. And like at some point, I think it was LSV who said that in, in, in a thread. And it's like... I own beta lands. Let me play beta lands. No, it's just like it was a big thread. And a lot of people were saying... Um, a lot of people were, were talking about that. We're like kind of joking about it and we're like, can't play my basic lands. I just bought it, plays out of uninch foils or beta or, lands. Or, or whatever. And whatever then, floats your boat. And then Azu was like basically saying like it kind of started as a joke, but I think it's now the number one reason. Like, look at all these people. They're all kind of mad. They're not like mad to the way like they're not gonna riot, but they are sad that they cannot play with their their lands. And that should be enough. Like, that should be enough. I mean, you're. Why not? You're sad when you're playing against Splinter Twin. You're sad, right? It, the, the, the sentiment is you're sad. The, the yes. feeling is you're sad. So why is that different? That you cannot play your cool basic lands. You're sad because it's not a format defining interaction. And why? So you're so you're saying that because you're sad about playing against Splinter Twin, that like it's the reason why it should be banned. No, I'm saying because it's a powerful interaction. Okay, 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 fair enough. I thought that's what you said earlier. I thought you just like hated to play against Twin. That's why you don't. No, you don't no, I was comparing the no. I was I was hating on the people that want play Twin unbanned. Okay, <clears throat> and my my uh, comparison was. This deck is too powerful for modern, according to Wizards. How is a powered up version in a smaller format correct for that lower power format if it's better in that format than it would be in a format where you have more cards? Yeah, sure. I mean, like, why is inverter not a thing in, mo- in modern? Because you don't have dig through time. Yeah. Why, why is it? Is, I mean, if 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 that's the, the the drawing line, the drawing argument to, well, inverters insane in pioneer and not playable in modern is because it's dig through time. Why wasn't that card hit? If it's inverter, know, we don't want it. Like, I don't know what happens if you put inverter like as is in modern. Like what what pioneer legal cards beside dig through time, are you not allowed to play in the pioneer version in modern? Okay, so I think if you just put the straight version into modern it's not good enough even with dig through time let's say you're the only one that can play dig through time and it's you and you're playing this straight pioneer deck and put it in modern i don't think it's good enough but if you take some of the cards that you're playing and replace them with the better versions that are in modern but also like you have dig you like time. you have access to fatal push fetch plants like you're, you have yeah, fatal push in your deck yeah that that thing is well you yeah. get to play serum visions okay okay yeah the fact that you get to play fetch and dig through time makes it probably that probably makes it better than anything else you can play in modern. Well, we can't play Dig Through Time in modern. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm trying to th- think like if you put because the interaction inverter and Jace itself, it's not good enough of a combo for modern. Like it's not close because it's four mana sorceries. Yeah, two of them. But the fact that you have Dig, if you had Dig and Fetches with that, for sure it would be. But. I mean, it, other things it, would be yeah. Other well. thing would be much much better too. So, yeah. So, uh, but but twin is different though. Twin is quite different. Like a twin is 
much better in some way, but also worse in other ways. Twin is much better because it's so much faster, so much less um, uh, combo oriented. Also, but um, like less. Often. It has much less like, disruption than the when you than when you go does. for the combo in um, in inverter and like trying to do t trying to do it quickly, like turn four Jace or inverter, and then the other card. You know, it's turn five, and but you've basically tapped out two turns, so it's well, a you lot tap harder. Out one to... turn because the other turn you just win. Yeah, but w what if the guy ha has an answer? Then you lost your turn also because you spent four. The Whereas is, you, when you, you only do that you, once, you get to you have the other turns to set up because you have access to thought seeds, which twin doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, but twin you get to do it faster. You also like your X arc faster might sometimes literally just buy you an entire turn. Because you're tapping a land, you're tapping a threat that's killing you or whatever. So twin is, is much better at that. But twin is vulnerable, whereas the other combo is not. Exactly. Like that there's it is. There's a few answers to the inverted deck, but very so niche such narrow cards. That get hit by things like thought seize. And that's my argument why twin should be unbanned, is that it that deck just you can beat that deck by just playing cards that you are already playing path. You're playing uh, fatal push did not exist when, when they banned yeah, and i think fatal push would make it so twin is completely fine like it and it's my the number one reason why i think it should be legal is that it's such a it, it brings really great play patterns it's very when attractive. you're playing twin not when you're playing against twin no it's not true it's it's really hard to play against twin like How finding the great lines against twin is hard okay because it's like a deck where like sometimes you might tap out, you get punished, but it's things that you that builds up along the game and that you can like read and like the way they the way they develop their first few turns, you can be like or or and that you develop your first few turns, you can be like okay now it's a good spot to tap out. I have a reasonable reason to think that they don't have the combo because of this this and this. So and that that is the best magic I can think of. It's like, don't you like it when you're playing against like a, a blue tempo deck or whatever, and you're trying to like navigate the game and like playing around their remand so that they don't they don't like take your whole turn because they remanded your stuff. Like this is the it depends if you have access to the tools to do all these plays. Yeah, but but you do because every every deck plays push, every deck plays path, every deck plays bolt, which kills half of the combo sometimes. Kiki or uh, or mm -hmm. Pester might like you have all these cards that are already in your decks. And so they they don't these decks don't warp the like twin doesn't warp the metagame because people don't have to play like leyline main deck like hogak you know they just have to play maybe a little bit more cheap removal which is fine because which is it's fine against magic. most things and that's what you want you want to encourage people playing creatures and and tracking removal because that's magic but yeah I've also had that twin like conversation a million times and probably like at least five on this channel. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to talk more about this. But we can go back to the bannings and just talk about Astrolabe quickly outside of the fact that it unbanned basic lands. Um, I think it's kind of funny because Moxopol was like, you know, it killed a few artifact decks. Astrolabe was like the last reason there was artifact decks. It was a pretty good one. So these decks were good because Astrolabe was really good. And now it's banned and I'm like, Who's ever going to play an artifact deck? Like, what artifacts are you playing? Like, Emery, such a good card, and it's like... Urza is such uh, a good card. Yeah, but it's you like all, the, all those great Astral creatures that it's were It's like, you, you banned the zero mana artifact that made mana. You banned the one mana artifact that made mana and drew a card. Now the zero mana artifact that you have left is the one that you're sacrificing to draw a card. You, you have to play really bad cards to, like, be able to play those cards now. And it sucks. Well, you get, oh, you get to David go. It says with it gone, you could unban Mox. Um, I don't think you need to do that. I, I think it's a. You could do that probably right now, and it may be fine. I don't know, but I think it's. You're gonna have to like. It's gonna be the Gol, the Golgari Grave Troll argument where it's gonna we can we can unban it now, and then three years later we're like, yeah, we gotta ban it again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's just gonna. They're gonna print something, uh, some artifact. That's good in a different way than Astrolabe that costs zero or one, and it's gonna make Mox broken. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, I agree that right now maybe they could do that. Yeah, 
Um, so <laughs> Twin would switch the Jeskai and make it so you can't interact anymore because you can play Teferi. But Teferi is really not that good in Twin. Like it's a three mana sorcery. It's not on curve with your combo. You don't really play that much that many sorceries. I mean, Storm Visions and Instant Speed is pretty good. I'll give you that, but. I mean, would you wait a turn to kill your opponent if you knew where you'd kill him anyway? I mean, Teferi is not that good in Modern because, like, playing three mana, bouncing something, is... You might die if you do that. Especially in a deck that's, like, relying on keeping counter spells up and stuff. If they use that turn to resolve something, like, you... I don't know, you might lose, but... It definitely changes the... I'm not going to talk about a format that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> So may maybe, but we talk about set roulette, <laughs> but it exists and it's set very popular. It exists. <laughs> <laughs> it's very popular. Um, so yeah, Astrolabe's banned. I don't know. Do you have thoughts on that that we haven't talked about? Um, topic. I haven't played mo modern and paper because COVID since three months. So yeah, <clears throat> the last time I played Astrolabe, I was allowed to do with Mox Opal. Uh, I was allowed to do with Oko, so oh boy. that was a that was a different time. Um, it's crazy to think that this all all of all of these cards are the last maybe a year, year and a half. From now. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, there was a time where Mox Opal, Astrolabe, and Oko were legal in the same deck, and they banned cards one after the other instead of all at the same time, to because. People continued to play the same deck and it was still winning. Wizards was like, man, I, we keep banning cards from this thing. People keep playing it. Well, I guess Astrolabe is probably the nail in the coffin because there's no artifacts in your deck anymore except unless you're going back to Thopter Foundry. Yeah. But uh, it's kind of sad because Astrolabe is such a cool card. Like, yeah. Doesn't it feel great to play that card? It just feels so great. I mean... From a design perspective, I feel like I'm breaking infinite amount of rules. Yeah. From a play perspective, like, what if all spells were colorless and magic? I get yeah. to play, like, especially that's what this card does. It's like, my cards don't have casting costs anymore. The, thing, the, the unfair thing is, like, when everyone gets to do that, it's fine. What you get to do and your opponent doesn't get to do it, that's kind of breaks the symmetry. Yeah. Anyway, that's banned. What else? Was there something else in that list? That got banned? Or yeah, was we it... didn't talk about the all famous Popper. Oh yeah, they banned uh, Mystic Sanctuary and Expedition Map. Yep. All I know about Popper is like from the last two years maybe is everyone keeps saying Tron is the best deck, and they never ban anything. Well, that's that was true before they like banned like three blue cards. I think it was like six months ago. It was like Gush Days and oh, that was way they banned that. Uh, well, okay. I don't. I think that's like uh, what you're talking about. I think is like a, a year ago. But okay. But yeah, it's after that blue era. Yeah, okay. after that blue era, apparently the Tron deck is like the best deck. That's what I heard. Okay. The, and the, they just they finally banned a card from it. This people are so so we have to sounds wait, like people are happy. We have to wait a year for in for in Pioneer than to ban Dictotype or Inverter. Maybe. Okay. But the um the other card, the Mystic Sanctuary, like. It make it, it's funny to me that the first format that it's banned is a format that doesn't have fetches. <laughs> what? Popper, they banned Mystic Sanctuary. Oh, okay. And the first for, like that card is broken with fetches. I agree. Like it is ridiculous. And the first format where it's banned is the format that doesn't have fetches. So that's really funny to me, but I don't know. It's a really powerful comment so, comment, so I'm not surprised that it would be banned. I, I had I had Mystic Sanctuary on on the chopping block in discussion for or for modern ban list instead of Astrolabe just because like when you're playing let's say against the old Snow Bant deck your opponent has access to Cryptic Command and uh, Mystic Sanctuary which they can find with a with a fetch land that's what's locking you out of the game not them casting Uro not them casting Supreme Verdict not them casting Planeswalkers it's the fact that you can no longer attack them. You can no longer resolve spells if need be, and that they have access to this loot without dedicating any cards to it but their draw step. Yeah. So their draw step beats your draw step every turn. So you're essentially you're getting locked out of the draw step. I think that's like one of the. I think that's one that's the one of the things that's less talked about that I think is the most egregious that they made. Mystic Sanctuary like and fetches. 
It's so unreal good. <laughs> I, I don't know. We I, needed to put a basic land type on this common land just so that we could make it interact with other things in, in, in Theros. I don't know. Like, there are three banned cards in Theros. Are we going to add a fourth one to Theros? Uh, not Theros, uh, Thorn, uh, Thornvel. Thorn, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that's that. Pre-modern. Let's talk about pre-modern. I started playing Felix, Magic. Can you pull up the article from the Mythic Store about pre-modern? I got to start playing Magic when pre-modern was standard. Standard, yeah. Magic. So they... So for those who don't know what pre-modern is, pre-modern is um, from 4th edition to Scourge. And it's essentially... Uh, to me, I really it's I get really nostalgic about that format because it's exactly the extended format that was played when I like started playing Magic, minus like Mirrodin, and it has um, they did something great with the format. So it was created by some guy in uh, Martin Berlin, a guy from Europe, and he created a format and he made bannings. And I think the bannings are like super spot on. They banned what are the bannings? I okay. did not look at the ban list. D most egregious ones you're like that makes sense that makes sense that is rishadon sense. port legal um can we pull yeah i think we can pull that up actually the link is how, how, in that how many one. cards are there, are there like, like three cards or like i don't know there's like 20 cards maybe okay. um it's like world gorger dragon uh yagmut's will um i think yagmut's bargain uh so ours is saga block show and tell okay. talarian academy so ours is saga set Amulet <laughs> of Quas. Uh, 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 what? Uh, all the obvious things. Amulet of Quas. What does that do? Oh, uh, I mean the the anti cards, right? Whatever. Yeah, the anti all the anti cards. Okay, so all the anti cards balance uh, channel all the restricted cards that are in restricted and vintage mostly. Okay, Grim Monolith is a maybe a card that you could argue. Maybe I think that's the one that it came after they played a little bit with the format and it looks too good G goblin recruiter you still get the food chain combo right yeah okay uh mana vault obviously uh strip mine tendrils is arguable maybe i don't know i haven't seen the combo decks what they look like with that um i mean you don't have access to the other types of kills right necro the other what you don't have access to like grape shot. Well, you have the access to brain freeze. Right? Yeah, brain freeze. There's a mono blue high tide brain freeze deck. So you're allowed to brain freeze. High tide? You're allowed to brain freeze. It's not high tide. It's but just... you're not allowed to tendrils people. Is it because you have to like yeah. cast twice your the amount of spells? I mean, it's probably because you also have camel ritual and dart ritual, right? And blue does has to play like sapphire medallion. How many medallion? Sapphire medallion. medallion. Sapphire medallion. Uh, maybe the deck plays nightscape familiar, but I don't know like. It's much harder to make it work, I think. Okay. Is maybe that's whereas why. like would it would just be the old storm deck. Like I saw Mindsar on on the list, but like Mindsar was actually legal and extended back then. You had Mindsar and Tendrils be legal in the blue black version. You also had four vampiric tutors in, in that in that format. So I understand yeah. why all these cards are banned. Yeah, that's the highlight of the extended format was like when I started playing. You could play four vampiric tutor. <laughs> yeah, I I remember playing a, a deck called Cephalid Breakfast, which turned into Cephalid Life, and it also had it was a vile it was a four color vile combo deck that had access to Living Wish, Wordly Tutor, and Vampiric Tutor, and your opponent would die on turn three after you milled your whole deck using um, Shuko. Shuko, if Nomad, if, uh, uh, Nomad, Nomad Encore, I think it was called. Nomad Encore and Cephalid Illusionist, which said when you it, you targeted it, you mill yourself for three. So you just target infinite times, you mill the entire deck. You would have to Crozen Reclamation, shuffling back a reanimation spell into your deck to then draw it to bring back a Sutured Ghoul, exiling all creatures from your graveyard, which turned to like about 30 power. And you had to have, when it came into play, attach Dragon Breath to give it haste to kill your opponent on turn three. This is very convoluted. Yeah, that was... This is very convoluted, Cold and garage. but these is like the word garage. This is how we were killing people in two thousand and so four. The reason I wanted to go to the ban list mostly uh, Flash is surprising to me because because protein alk is not there, but maybe there's something else. Broken. I mean, you can. I, I feel like the reason why you can just like there drop a palancron to play in like ri blue ritual yeah. with it. Right? I guess. I mean, build your own ritual? I feel like it's it's just a card that, that's 
The screams being broken. I mean, broken. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's a non rotating Like, there's never new cards that are going to be added to the format, right? So if it's not broken with anything, why would it be banned? But oh, that's a good someone's point. going to call you out but, on that. And but it, but I'm sure it's good with something. So that's what I like about their ban list. There's nothing that doesn't make sense on there. And so the only two things that you could say, why are these banned? It's Force Brainstorm? of Will and Brainstorm. And the big reason that they said is if those cards are legal, our format is just legacy. Fetches, Brainstorm, like all the blue Oh yeah, fetches are, are legal, yeah. You have five, you have five fetches. Five fetches. Okay. So, and I think that makes a lot of sense. So now the blue decks look, look more like they're playing Impulse, Accumulated Knowledge, yeah. Intuition. Intuition. Pretty and awesome. the counter spells are... You still have actual counters for your days and your force spike, but you don't get force of will. So that I, I really like that philosophy. Uh, yeah, I kind of it's it it's, it sounds to me like kind of an arbitrary decision. Whereas it's like you want your format to be legacy without the high. Type I mean, of like raw wizards. Power. Yeah, we, we and just, we, we want the format either at in standard at some point. It, so I don't even think it's because they it, think it's too good. It's just we they don't want our yeah, their format exactly. to look that's, like that's legacy. That's what I'm saying. They just want to make it different. And I, I think that's important in instrumental. If you if you get to construct a new format and all you have to do is ban two cards out of almost ten years of magic, I think that's pretty spot on. Yeah, brainstorm I, force. Yeah. I want you guys chat all the players of Mythic Society to break pre modern because I have a hard time believing that a set a format that has not that many bannings, not frequent bannings and no new cards ever added is not broken i mean like, in tomb is not on the legacy ban list but it's on this ban list so yeah so maybe that you can't reanimate um uh, but look at the decks click on the decks felix there's it seems so it seems unbelievably um powerful uh not powerful uh certainly not powerful um, well, oil. why are there no, so many decks uh, versatile uh, why are there wall of powers. blossoms splashed in your blue yeah, yeah, white control that, deck i think that deck is I, I honestly i looked at it and i was like uh what year is this but i mean that's just wrong like, there's no way that's right th these decks are like sample decks that they put there on their website uh, as just like ideas yeah. uh there's other control decks that are exactly like that but are not splashing wall i mean look, look at look at the, the 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 rebels deck like that looks like a real deck like yeah, it has guys deck. it has counter spells it has removal like that makes sense to me putting four wall of blossoms in a blue white control deck just to have it wall of omens that does not make sense. I mean, to me. that's yeah. fine if you could uh, cast it, but there's six sources that cast the wall of the omens. We all three threes, man. <laughs> and wall and blossom wall blocks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm totally fine with wall blossom. Like wall blossom seems good in that deck, in that format. And there's like it blocks stuff, but it's so this is mono black disenchant. Dead guy. It's just that dead guy. Yeah. Mono black disenchant. I mean. That, that's that's the first thing I saw. Like I saw swamps and disenchant. This deck's cool, and I don't think that's a deck that ever existed. Uh, because I don't I mean, know you why. Can, can you can you play this in Legacy? Can you just like take this deck and play it in Legacy? Oh yeah, but it's terrible. It's way too slow. But for this format, it's like a combo deck. That's what does it do? So it's it's with that card. I mean, and... I've played Gamekeeper as a combos deck in the in the past. It, the fact that it's the four mana sorcery. 2-2 two, two makes makes it bad. Oh, so but, that uh, wants to chain gamekeepers into Iridescent Drake with... The Abduction. So, abduction. I can't read the cards from here, but it, it had, the combo is with Abduction and the Drake. Well, and yeah. And you sack it with Therapy or Altar, I think. Yeah. And it creates... Oh, loop. so it's a loop. You mill your opponent, essentially. Yeah, if you have oh, Altar, you mill your you opponent. Your opponent okay. with uh, fine. Altar and Dimension. That's fine. Yeah, Th this is a really cool example of the, of the format because it's like a combo deck that existed before, but nobody ever played. I mean, it has eight it has eight soul lands and four mox diamonds. And I mean, there's a fairly, and there is no legacy deck that does that does this. There's True. a fairly uh, there's a fairly good chance that um, people back then just couldn't put two and two together. Oh, because we didn't have honestly, information because we yeah. didn't have internet yeah, uh, yeah, i absolutely. think the real reason is that there was something way better to do and extended oh yeah maybe for sure yeah <laughs> the, 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 i mean vampire tutor was legal yeah some of the cards on the battle list were legal so it was just better 
but it's still and two was legal. I know and two got and two got banned. And two did get banned. And Al's deck, of course, makes sense. It does not seem too good either because it doesn't have like plays Kamal. Yeah, it doesn't have the broken. It's a great card. Kamal, frantic storm. That deck looks cool. It's the storm deck with the format. Chill with brain freeze. Frantic search. You can play four frantic search, which is kind of frantic search was banned and extended. Yeah. Well, so that's the thing where it's different. In, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Goblins. Uh, goblins. Got to have your mono red deck. Click slithers. Four ports. Click two wastelands. Two wastelands. Did, 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 was it really two wastelands? Yeah. yeah. No, it's two wastelands. Okay. Okay, bro. <laughs> and then, it doesn't have vital. So. It, 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 it also didn't have fetch lands. So. Lands. Um, that deck looks cool. It's like a proper lands deck. As where like, where where's the oath of druid? Why would it play oath of druid? Because you get to play turbo lands. Huh? Turbo lands is a deck designed by Mr. Zvimashevitz, which when you play an oath of druid, you mill yourself into a car a card called battlefield scrounger, which is legal in this format. Maybe oath of druid was on the man list, and I'm just can you, can I'm you just stay stupid. on that list because no, we're talking oath, about um, oath of druid is not uh... it is legal. It is okay. Yeah. Um, you you would mill yourself into a card called Battlefield Scrounger. It is a three three for three colors and two green. It has a threshold clause that says you may return three cards from your graveyard onto the bottom of your library. And he would loop time uh, time warp after milling his deck by adding three time warps to the bottom there and just killing your opponent with uh, Treetop Village because all you get to do is just cast time warp for the rest of the game because he was just milling himself entirely with Oath of Druids. He won a Grand Prix in 2001 with this Turbo Lands deck. Yeah, how, like, what if you just hit the Scrounger in the next, in the ten, first 10 cards? You activate Oath of Druid next turn. Do you? You have a creature in play now. I mean... You, that like, sounds the, the, awful. His, his whole deck, <laughs> I mean, you can just, like, bring up the deck list of, of the deck that I'm talking about. You can just go on magicthegathering.com into the archives, into the uh, into the Grand Prix That's archives. That's way too long. You I just mean, Google the, V Oath of Druid Scrounger. The the chat's gonna do it. Can you do that, Felix? Sure. It's Grand Prix. I'd just, like to just just like type Zvi Oath of Druid. I'm sure right, he's right, never no, played that deck no. more than once. Right, Turbo Lands. Sure. Yeah, there we go. First suggestion. But yeah, this deck looks dope. Like, it's a proper lands deck. Like his, his, his deck was straight deck. blue green, and his deck was like full of like accumulated knowledges and and, and intuitions, just like draw cards and put lands into play with with uh, time warps, and you just took turns and milling your entirety of your deck, and then when you had no cards back in your deck, you just buy back these three time warps and just kill your opponent with this random scrounger and those bounce spells in your deck and whatnot. Did we find it? I sent it to him. Oh, you guys want to talk about it? I mean, can you... Can I you want to up? see the deck list. I yeah, have no sure. idea what he's talking about. I mean, I, I have an chat. idea. Jeff Cunningham topic of that Grand Prix. Okay. Can this, I... Moment this piece. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the this is the tournament talk about. Uh, okay, can I can you click on the battlefield scrounger card so I can look at it? Put Okay. Like there's um, there's no card in this deck that is not legal in their format. Is Gush legal? It is. Okay. Because you don't have fast modern, right? There's no fast modern, it's exploration. Yeah, that's, that's. I thought that was the card that was good with Gush. I mean, exploration and Gush are fine. Yeah, it's fine. Like, he's not playing a full set. No. He's just playing a ton of basics. Okay, so. It's like your blue deck can't beat this because it has counter spells and draw spells, and your creature deck can't beat it because you just play Oath of Drizzle and put it into play. Like, I mean. Oh, a blue deck will never lose to that deck. How counter spells do nothing if the rest, like this deck, only does something if Oath, Oaths gets activated. Like you're never gonna, you're never gonna time warp many times if you haven't milled your entire deck. 
I understand. So how what is, are how... you doing if you're not Oath of Druiding? You're just drawing cards. Your, your deck has four Horn Greaves in it. You're just putting lands in the and okay. drawing cards. Okay, but... That's all you do. Okay, sure. Okay. Would your opponent you to attack all... you? Okay, if, like, if, the deck has Moments piece. If you resolve a Horn of Grid... You... Okay, sure. I can see the deck winning then. What is your opponent going to counter? All your th all your cards do are draw cards. Yeah, but they might kill you, I guess. With what? Yeah, you have your own uh, counter spells. Sagathog, or I don't know what decks people are playing. Like Madness seems insane against that deck. Madness couldn't beat Oath of Druids. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Is, is there Cunning Wish in this deck? This looks like a Cunning Wish sideboard. No. Okay. Yeah, no Cunning Wish. Okay, interesting. All right, let's go back to the deck lists. <laughs> And like I never played this format yet, I know that this deck exists, and like you just essentially showed oh, me it's a worse version. Really late, oh shit! Yeah, bro, okay, all right, we're gonna close this. Um, before we do, um, we're just gonna close the pre-modern thing by saying that today we announced that we now have we now support pre-modern in our weekly tournaments. It's every Wednesday. Well. It's every. It's gonna be every Wednesday for sure. We're starting out with a uh, structure where it starts at 1 p.m. and it's four rounds. 1 p.m. EST. That means European players can play. Um, we are. We're gonna change this around. If if you're saying, if you can't play because you're in North America or Pacific. wherever in the world, and you are on the same continent as us, and you work during work during uh, the day on a uh, Wednesday. Uh, please tell us like that's the feedback we want because we think that most players that th the current base is mostly European players so we wanted to cater to them uh, but also NA we have tournaments already on on Monday at 1 p.m. and those those actually fire they have play they have people so it works so try and figure it out it might be 1 p.m. it might be 7 p.m. in the future um, but the next one, the first one next week is at 1 p.m. Can you go check that out on uh, our uh, MTG Valley page? So, with that said, um, I think that's it for tonight. Um, go check out our store, mythicstore.com, and type exclamation point tournaments for all of our tournaments that we run. We now have over 14 tournaments every month. You get access to all of that with uh, your Twitch subscription, which is free with prime by the way so yeah let's close out with unbanned twin unbanned yeah, twin. yeah uh we're gonna be rating our boy sidetrack yeah sounds good yeah i'm just gonna roll this little video and we're gonna rate at the end of it have a good one everyone thanks for coming see you soon Catch you see you next week Society.